one and I can't even I can't even wait <laughs> the full five seconds to <laughs> start start being uh serious I guess uh but uh hello uh this is uh this is Zombie Paper and I am uh joined by Bella Beluga. Um That's me. Hello. Hello and uh this is uh, episode uh what is this episode now? Uh uh twenty seven, twenty eight, somewhere around twenty twenty eight I think because wasn't last week twenty six and then you had the one with Nigel yesterday which would have been twenty seven. Yes. I I yeah. can do math um, and counting. <laughs> it, it is challenging. I will be honest. Uh, math yeah, is I mean, it's strength. honestly not the easiest. Like people, I think, really take it for granted having like just basic, you know, arithmetic skills. It, it's really funny in that it's like, uh, so my. And, uh, hey, bad gamer. Yeah. Hey, bad, uh, bad G gamer Esquire. <laughs> bad G gamer Esquire MD. Yeah. MD. PhD. PhD. Yeah. Uh, so I went to college and I got a degree, but it's like the the most level of math I've ever done was intermediate mm -hmm. algebra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, how did I get away with that by being an IT person? Well, uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, do you really need that much like advanced math in IT? Like, I imagine that like you would need to do maybe like an amount of calculations for sure. But I feel like it would just be like various, like very complex combinations of, you know, your, I guess like what, like basic four operations, is it? Um, so or this is how a good, many? this is a good kind of yeah. like intro for, uh, for goals um, regarding like mm -hmm. IT work and then the level of, of education and then studying that you need um, yeah. specifically regarding math, um, because with, um, so within, within it, mm -hmm. pretty much you're going to start off with help desk work. Like that's like 95% of people do that. Um, if you're going through the, the tech support routes that I know, if you're going mm -hmm. into like programming development, that sort of thing, uh, it does not apply. But as far as within my scope, um, you're starting off with help desk, unless you've like achieve some kind of mastery for some reason then it's like oh hey like yeah like <laughs> here you go you get to be a, a network admin without any help desk experience like uh okay <laughs> um so the ramble will will be concise in this way that um network admins i could imagine that would be people that would be assessing the the range of like wireless connections or like mm -hmm. doing the mathematics to figure out how far does this ethernet cable go before we have to do a repeater or some kind yeah. of device like that. But for me, it's like, all I got to do is like <laughs> refer the documentation and, and bang it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's a place for everybody, I guess, in all of these disciplines, you know, and at various skill levels. Yeah. Um, and then we should also, I, I just realized that bad, uh, bad G gamer had mentioned, mentioned a bunch of stuff there. So yeah. <laughs> I don't want to uh, go. Oh, and thank you for uh, resubscribing by the way, bad gamer. Um, uh, Oh, it is sad when you see like an animal having like a bad dream or like obviously something like disturbing or disturbing happening to them in their sleep. Um, I've definitely seen the boys kind of wake up really like startled. Um, I think even Oscar like woke up one time like kind of row, 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 sort of like, you know, um, poor guy. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, math isn't for everybody. I mean, it's just, you know, again, like, as I said, like, if you can do, you know, basic, like, math, you know, for kind of everyday life, uh, you should feel proud of yourself, you know, because not everybody is able to do that. Yeah, it's something that um, I, I call it like zombie paper math when I, when I try mm -hmm. to do things. And it's like, it's like then I have to step back and say, why am I overcomplicating this? <laughs> oh, I get that. Yeah, I definitely understand that. Oh, uh, 
I'm somewhat louder than you, apparently. Uh, I wonder somewhat if louder it's... than me. Okay. Uh, how about now? This should be better. This is why I always appreciate people's audio feedback because I do not know. I mean, we do do like little recordings before the stream to like check levels and stuff, but um, even that sometimes is not the best. Yeah, on my side. I just don't want to like blast people's ears out. But, you know, I guess people can always tell me to turn it down, and I guess it's better to be too loud than too quiet, right? Uh, I suppose so. Uh, I also have on my side uh, Chef Peanut 808 from uh, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so hi, Chef Peanut. Maybe Chef can uh, let me know if uh, if our audio balancing is uh, good or not. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of audio checks, too, especially yeah. live when you never know... <laughs> things get kind of wonky <laughs> oh man like the amount of times that i have accidentally like been muted myself or like had somebody else muted um you know and then you don't find out for a while because like people are like you know and i again this is not like a bad thing you know obviously like people have you know lives and stuff but you know if there's a lot of people lurking who might not necessarily have the volume on like if nobody's listening then, you know, when somebody comes in who is, you know, listening to your audio and everything is like, uh, this isn't quite, you know, like, I can't hear you. And I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> so I was just talking for the last like 45 minutes just to myself, you know, but although Horatio did say that even if my mic is muted, I guess that the captions still work. So. Hey, that's pretty good. Um, I don't I, know. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh, I was doing a recording for the Thanksgiving drawing stuff I was doing, the Friendsgiving, mm -hmm. and yeah, I my my headset cut out there for a good few minutes, and it took until uh, uh, Automod underscore Raf had uh, been like, "Hey, I don't know if you're on like break or something, but I can't hear you." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Hey, thanks there, Raf." <laughs> Yeah, right. And you're just completely just talking like totally to yourself. Just yeah. you and the like dust motes floating in the air around you. Uh, so then I go watch back over the VOD. It's like it just cut out for four minutes, just like randomly before Rap mentioned it. It's just like, ah. Uh... That's so aggravating. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, you just I mean, a goal I could say, have we talked about the like the topic yet? Mm. Did I miss that? I'm usually late. Uh, I mentioned uh, I didn't really mention formally. I just kind of mm. we just started chatting. But uh, yeah, for 27 episode 28 here, I should say uh, I've really got it on the ball. Um <laughs> is uh with the su with the title of goals how to keep your goal pound sign goals from becoming your pound sign trolls <laughs> and i was very much like i was looking at the a rhyming dictionary i was just like yes there it is there it works <laughs> yeah i mentioned it to horatio earlier and uh, I think that that got a chuckle out of him. So an, I, an IRL laugh, which is, I think, a high compliment. And not just that kind of, like, amused sort of, you know, huff uh, that I think people do a lot. You know, the, like, the, you know, little nose snort or whatever. The sensible chuckle? The sensible chuckle, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Ah, uh, yeah. And, uh... Well, it's like it's all part of like the goals of what we want out of out of what we do. It's like if if what you're trying to do is just like, uh, you know, this is good enough. I can I can put mm -hmm. this out there and call it a day, then fine. But if it's like I want this to be something bigger than that, then I might I might actually put in a little bit of effort. <laughs> well, right. And I think, man, that is just honestly like one of the most. And it's a very basic fact, but it doesn't keep it from being a very annoying fact, which is that the only way that things are going to get done and the only way that things are going to change is if you actually 
physically do it. Like, you know, it's there's no amount of planning or plotting or list making or vision board making or talking to other people or whatever that's going to actually like make those changes happen in your life. Uh, you have to actually like take initiative and take action to do it. And it sucks. Like, and I'm like, I have to do this every day. <laughs> I have to keep like struggling like towards these goals. And it's like, you know, and I know that putting it that way, maybe is not making it sound like it's the best thing in the world to have goals. But I mean, the whole point is that, you know, the growth is, you know, in the process, you know, like the achieving of the goal is just an, a, you know, part of the process, because then you're going to set another goal after that, you know, you're never truly done. Like nobody is a hundred percent expert in what they do. Yeah. Uh, it's something that when, when I talk to, to like, especially when I worked in it, when I talk to IT professionals that were actually interested in studying and learning. Um, it's because it's a market. It, it's marketable as an advantage to say, I am up to date on the most recent things. I, I have the skill advantage. Um, but the reason why I never went into more advanced like network admin, systems admin stuff is that uh, you, you take a work week and you take a week and then you subtract like half of that. <laughs> and that's going to be like your your uh, like dedicating all this time to to work. And it's like, I just want to do stupid bullshit. <laughs> yeah, right. Like that's one of the things about. Um, so this is something about like Saturn and specifically about Capricorn that I've seen more people mentioning recently, astrologically speaking, is understanding the gravity of power and understanding that choosing it can be a burden like in and of itself. Um, and so like sometimes power and control for that, you know, Capricorn person actually being stepping away from that situation where they would have to compromise their own dignity or integrity. Let me find the tweet thread and I'll share it. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, uh, on my side, Chef Sinja and myself have been talking a little bit about captions and how uh, how it's it's good for inclusivity, but it's also um, I I honestly spend about fifteen to twenty minutes trying to figure it all out, and I was just like, I it, this is not intuitive for me. I can't figure it out, so uh, mm -hmm. I I leave it for the YouTube uh, machine to when I when I co-broadcast on YouTube uh, not sponsored but I, I make sure that it's like it will mostly 80% of the time get subtitles automated for me and then mm -hmm. <laughs> you just have to go back and check the automated subtitles sometimes <laughs> yeah I uh, I've actually started looking at uh, now that I'm doing uh, oh this is a good opportunity for me to mention now that one of my goals for 2022 has been to expand my uh, astrological offerings. And so I'm beefing up my Kofi. And uh, I am now going to be posting weekly recorded Astro Dice readings um, for uh, just, yeah, five bucks a month. Um, and then I'll be also doing recorded Astro Dice readings uh, for the new and full moons uh, of the month as well. And that's at an $8 uh, tier. So... Yeah, uh, I had a lot of fun recording the first one yesterday and uploading it. So, um, you know, if that's something that interests you is getting kind of a little forecast from me using the Astro Dice, um, you could type exclamation point Kofi and uh, sign up there. And uh, I am going to be adding other tiers. I'll be having some craft related ones, like receiving a little monthly package for me with some little crafted things or kind of like a, you know, craft of the month type thing. Um, but yeah, so that's what I have to offer for now. So, um, but yeah, as part of that goal, you know, I very strongly believe that any kind of visual content also needs to have a written description. Like, please, please fill out the alt text for your images when you post them on Twitter, on Instagram. I think Facebook also has it now. 
Um, but please make sure that you have like some kind of image description with your images. Um, and similarly, if you make any kind of video content, please try to offer subtitles or a transcript or some other way to make it accessible in a written format. Um, uh, you know, and so this is something that I'm thinking about with these readings. And so I typed up a transcript yesterday and it worked out fine, but I have been looking into, um, how to, it's apparently pretty easy to create your own subtitle files. Mm. Um, you just have to learn the, like, you don't even need a special program. You literally just go into notepad and, uh, you type out, you just have to type it. It's kind of like code, I guess. Like you have to type it out in very specific formatting and then you save it with a specific extension. And then, uh, yeah, it's just kind of, I guess, a universal format for, for subtitling. So that might be something that I will have to learn in the future uh, or that I might want to learn so that I can offer that as an option so that it's there with the video versus somebody having to watch the video and read the transcript at the same time. Oh, I, I have a little bit of insight in this. I actually... Oh, great. So um, way, way back in, in the uh, in the far, far flung days of uh, piracy of the old lore, uh, I was in one community um, who I won't say in full because it's kind of an exclusive club, but KG. Yeah. So KG specializes in... in very obscure movies like we're talking okay. like <laughs> if you want to watch this particular portuguese movie that was released in the 70s that you can't find anywhere else it might be yeah. on kg and so all right there were folks that were like i will write subtitles in english to help people watch this movie with more accessibility mm -hmm. and wow. so people would translate translate the movie line by line into English, and then it'd be like a dot SRT, so uh, mm -hmm, the letters yeah. would be Sierra Romeo Tango. I don't know what the the acronym stands for legitimately, but uh, that was that was one part of my thought. The second part was when I was doing the game development journalism stuff. Uh, my buddy Josh and I were trying to do transcripts, and it was just a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. But then we figured out uh, that if if we just upload videos to YouTube, let mm -hmm. YouTube do the auto transcribing, mm -hmm. then we could just go back in and edit it. And it was like, oh, <laughs> that's smart. Significantly less labor, which is uh, <laughs> one of my goals uh, for yeah. 2022 is to reduce the labor I spend on certain activities. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, right. I mean, especially with these, because like, you know, with all due respect for $5 a month, you know, they're pretty like, you know, it, they're informative, but, you know, basic, you know, uh, forecasts, you know, I'm going to be keeping them to like 10 minutes or less. This one was about like eight. Um, but, you know, I, and so I want to make the production of it, you know, easier, you know, as well. Because, like, you know, if I only spend, like, 10 minutes recording a video, but then I have to spend, like, 40 minutes transcribing it. Yeah. Or something like that, you know. Uh, especially, like, because, yeah, I am uploading them to YouTube, um, like, you know, as, like, uh, unlisted or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. And so, yeah, so that's something I could try then. Um, I'll have to go in there and check out the the auto transcription or the auto captions that it's put on there already. Yeah, I would, I'm, I'm leaning more generous in this regard now because now that I'm uploading a lot of VODs and all that, I'm finding that the subtitles work a lot faster. Mm. <laughs> so maybe it just like, oh, Zombie Paper's uploading a lot of hours of, material each week we we got to step up this <laughs> the transcription game yeah 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 <laughs> yeah it's like oh we can't get a we you know we can't afford to get backlogged here yeah so i don't the know the internet tubes were already clogged yeah i i don't know for sure how many like how long it takes and all that kind of stuff but i would say definitely um that i've i've seen it more often than not and just like Wow, I didn't expect this. This is nice. <laughs> and then I have my Android phones that 
uh, both of them do automatic subtitling transcription stuff or subtitles i should say so oh, okay th that's an easy way for me like like uh, on my site peanut is is watching on on peanut's phone or chef peanut mm -hmm. uh, so with the phone it can be like you know chef might be working on stuff and then not hear mm -hmm. everything but then see it in the subtitles and be like oh okay yeah. i'm catching i'm following along and yeah it's pretty cool Right. I mean, that's, you know, that's how I generally use them um, is, you know, if I have somebody on on like, I don't know, my iPad or my laptop that's like next to me while I'm working on something else. Or, you know, like if I want to lurk in somebody's stream and see what's going on, you know, but like maybe be playing some music or something. Captions are great because then I can still see what's going on. I could still like pause to like, you know, go over and like type something, Um you know, so yeah, I am very, oh, oh, I will say this. So a lot of people get um, a very popular closed caption extension on Twitch, um, but then do not take the very important step of opening the web page that actually, uh, I guess, basically does the like audio, you know, intake and like captioning and then sends it through to your stream to that extension to then be displayed. So a lot of people are only doing 50%, which is just having the extension, but you actually need to make sure to open the recording page um, before streaming uh, and hit start, which is something that I forget to do a lot of times. So I'll have the page open, but I forget to hit start. Um, so yeah, I think it's called just closed captions for streams. It just has a big white like CC logo, um, but it's really popular and I see a lot of people installing it. But then nine times out of 10, if I see it on their stream, it's not working because they're not recording. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a little bit guilty of that, of not having done any of that. Um, I know like Willow does it very well. It's like mm -hmm. she's got like a button. You just click the CC button and it just, it works. Yeah. I'm just like, what is this magic and how can I replicate this? <laughs> and that's it. That's all it is. It's probably that same extension. And all you have to do is install the extension. You put it in as a, I think, is it, it's like an overlay or it's one of the options where you can like click and move it around on the screen, but you just install that. And then there's a website that you go to before you stream and you just authorize it to use your Twitch and then, you know, you set your language and your dialect and then you click start and then that's it. That's literally all you have to do. You could do it like now, basically. Um, you know, it's it's a very simple process. I think a lot of people just don't know to follow through on the other 50%. Yeah, it's... I'll be honest that on the Twitch side, it is just uh, it is really tricky for me to figure out. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I let right now i let the the youtube side kind of catch me there and help me out there mm -hmm. um yeah because honestly like going forward uh, uh this is another... like i mean i'm not saying that you need to go to jail for like not having closed <laughs> captions like obviously but you know i think it's a you know it's a basic you know accessibility thing i go to twitch jail <laughs> yeah you're, you're going to twitch jail you're getting timed out for 10 days yeah, in the yeah. old Twitch lockup, <laughs> that Twitch, Twitch jail food. Well, I mean, this is one of my goals for 2022: is that I'm doing, I'm, I maybe of all my recording time, I would say between 10 to 20 percent is now going, like doing the coast co broadcasting onto Twitch and YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. That primarily will be podcasts with some other things as well but a majority of it going into 2022 and beyond my goals are to do more of offline recordings um, and that is something that I I find uh, as much as I like interacting with the audiences um, I honestly like doing offline recordings I don't want to say more but it's a different kind of sensation right <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you enjoy both of the experiences, but, you know, in different ways, like not one isn't necessarily better than the other. They're just kind of both the best of their own, you know, experience. 
Uh, like it doesn't have to be hierarchical, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like if I focus on doing an art project, then I need to put all of my focus on that. If if right. say like Sinja or Chef or or Gordy or or anyone else says hello and wants to have a conversation, mm-hmm. I will be being rude to these people to f- say like, hey, I'm focusing on this project. I'm getting this all done. Mm-hmm. And right. if I don't, then I'll get distracted and end up like looking up like Wikipedia stuff about German stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I mean, I absolutely come and sit down here and do like, you know, off stream crafting on some stuff where it's like, I just really need to sit down and like focus. And like, that would be one of those cases I was talking about where I might have somebody's channel up and like be lurking and have their captions on and then have some music going and, you know, just sit there and work. Cause I need to focus, you know, especially with really complex stuff, like, especially with like tatting. I think there's, if I start any new tatting projects, I might do those off stream because that is a craft where like it is not very forgiving if you kind of like let your mind slip and then, you know, you do some wrong pattern stitches versus crochet and knitting, you know, it's no problem. It might be annoying, but like it's much easier to fix. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, it Like even like as an example with, with playing video games, um, during a lot of the downtime, if you will, it's mm-hmm. it's very much like that is the time when broadcasters will be the most open to chatting, having conversations. But when it comes to like the precise jumping, precise actions, mm-hmm. um, I've seen even even broadcasters with multiple thousands of, of followers and even viewers that mm-hmm. oftentimes they'll be like, they'll focus on that part so they'll be silent and mm-hmm. it's kind of like hmm I, so like i'm i'm studying this i'm recognizing that that's not a bad thing that's actually a good thing to see that if you need to dedicate that amount of focus to like a 30 minute segment of the gameplay mm-hmm. where you're not chatting because oh i got to do all this precisely then that's not really yeah. super maybe audience engaging um mm-hmm. It's almost validating yeah. in a way to say, like, yeah, we do have some projects that require offline stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, the first person that I thought of when you talked about that was um, there's a Super Mario 64 streamer called D whatever that uh, like it's really easy to tell, like when he's like really on a good run because, you know, he'll just go like silent. You know, it'll mm. usually be like maybe like once he gets to like the upstairs portion or uh, what they call tippy, uh, which is because it's the tippy top of the castle. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, uh, yeah, you can definitely see her. Like, I've even seen some people who are like, yeah, I'm just going to turn chat off like right now. Or like, I'm going to hide it so that I don't see it so that I can focus. D whatever with a uh, uh, subtitle of I love SM64. Uh, should be, yeah. Hey, we found I found it on uh, on my side, so I'll put it in the show notes there. Yeah, I can't remember if he's got. I know I think his like Twitter icon is like a really crappy drawing of him. I can't remember <laughs> if that's his like Twitch icon as well. Well, I do um, see a a uh, if you want to call it crappy, yeah, it it probably is. Uh, <laughs> uh it it's a style. It definitely this is this is a style. It's a style. Oh, is it his offline uh, image? Uh, well, I see. I see last stream um, that mm-hmm. was one hour and forty nine minutes with a picture of of D whatever, uh, like yeah. a, a webcam, and then I see the drawing. It looks about the same, so I'd say uh-huh. probably on brand. Probably the same person we're probably thinking on brand. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's really good. He's really um, funny and just seems like you know a nice guy and is very very good at the game. But, like, that's the thing. It's, like, even if he's not talking, like, I'm fine with that because I'm interested in just watching him play. Like, yeah. you know, I think he says interesting and funny things. But, like, you know, I, I, I'm i watching somebody perform at an expert level in this skill that they perform, you yeah. know? Um, I mean, he's won, like, real money, you know, in, like, major competitions for this game, you know? And it's held, you know, multiple world records and everything. Um 
And so it's just watching somebody who's really skilled at what they do perform that skill at a really high level. You know, I don't expect him to like be sitting there and holding like a long conversation at the same time, you know, like I'm not going to like go up to a baseball player like while they're like waiting to like strike and be like trying to interview them or like you know, be like, hey, so what do you think about, you know, uh, you know, the, the price of milk these days, you know, like what's your favorite color kind of shit. It's like I'm trying to focus here. <laughs> yeah. Um and I think a lot of that too is is setting yourself up to succeed versus fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In that when I've the thing that I learned, like this is the goal impetus for twenty twenty two, is that in twenty twenty one I realized that there are certain projects I'm working on that I kinda need this focus, but then it's like I'd kinda rather chat with the audience and <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And so you choose like, you know, you choose what stuff is good on stream material and you choose what's good off stream material. You know, what do you want to share? What can you kind of almost take a hit on a little bit, yeah. like in your focus? Um, what can you afford to take a little bit of it, a hit on versus what's something that you really need to be focused in on? This turned out really well for me to, to refocus because uh, I was doing an art project and for some reason we got starting to talk about geography and I was just like, yeah, let's, let's do like an extended, uh, Google maps, not sponsored, uh, break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I spent like three hours looking at geography and it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's your stream and you can do what you want as it turns out. Yeah, um, actually. I hope it won't be too distracting. I really would like, it'd be nice if I could get some magnification going here looking at this thing but you know a lot of it is you don't know it until you're like right in the middle and it's like oh uh i need to fix this <laughs> yeah because see now it's all like super shadowy just either that or i'm just gonna have to uh oh man if i have to like sit here with some like big old magnifying glasses like big old you know goggles like this on i'm not going to be pleased but all right well it's a nice attempt i guess let me at least put my crafting glasses on uh sorry what were we talking about <laughs> i was just thinking of that same thing we were talking about speed running by a way mm -hmm. of how when we broadcast stuff we want mm -hmm. to make sure that it is uh, i honestly that's why i'm focusing about 80 percent of my recording time on offline stuff like re doing art projects or or whatever researching stuff because um i i want to believe that, that is good and interesting information but mm -hmm. I know that it is not really the most audience engaging interacting where um, it's not really interactive material that whereas this podcast is semi interactive. <laughs> semi interactive. Yeah. Uh, um, I always think it's funny. Like when we've watched like some speed running stuff before, uh, like big like events and stuff on the like uh, games done quick channel um, or the what is it European speed running speed runners assembly or something like that GDQ and ESA respectively um, but you'll see people like come into the chat and be like oh is this live like and it'll be like clearly a live event people come and be like oh is this live and people will be like uh, no uh, or like yes this is live but the chat is pre-recorded <laughs> nice yeah and so it's like you know yeah you ask silly questions and you get silly answers yeah it it's something that through my research doing like healthcare research and all that um what i've realized is that there are kind of like three phases to to learning stuff um mm -hmm. there's like getting the most filthy casual basic information on a topic uh to then dig deeper into 
books or articles or papers or whatever the case may be, more in-depth material, and then finally going to reach out to an expert saying like, hey, doctor, uh, I've done all this research. Uh, what can you tell me about all of this? And then it's like, no, it's not that. It's this. It's not that. It's that. And it's like, oh, cool. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess it's kind of like a, an overall like life goal. I would like to get my disability uh, less severe. That would be a good goal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but like that can feel like, you know, that's it's a big goal and there's a lot of different parts. So then it's like when you have a big goal, like it's great to have big goals. But like you have to break it down into like, OK, what does achieving this goal actually mean? Like what are measurable you know, uh, like steps of this, you know, that I can keep track of, or, you know, how do I actually break this down into bite-sized pieces? Yeah, that's where I try to keep it. Like today I need to call, uh, a, a neurologist and rehab clinic to get appointments scheduled. I have referrals set up, so I just need to go do that. Um, mm -hmm. and then, from there it's like <laughs> we'll see what happens but it's like that should get me fairly moving along so that's yeah. good like every day i try to work on my goals of like healthcare and other stuff that's um that's another good good idea to to bring up so if if my long term goal is to be a professional writer um then i realized this many years ago that i have to write daily yeah so yeah like what i was saying at the beginning the only way that you're going to actually make these things happen is to do them yeah 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 and it's something that you you know my my writing kind of <laughs> pace and schedule you mm -hmm. know that it's like it um so a friend of mine kip uh is uh is trying out um doing writing similar to mine and mm -hmm. that just like uh they're they're at the very precipice of where I am uh, five and a half years into this process. So they're just like at the start of all of this and just like, it's really cool to see that. <laughs> yeah, right. And then you can look back and be like, okay, what would, you know, new writer, you know, uh, zombie paper, you know, uh have wanted to know or have needed help with or whatever. Like, how could I, you know, now stepping into the teacher role from having been the student, you know, and you still are a student, but you're a more advanced one, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how can I then be of service and how can I, you know, help facilitate this person's education as well so that they can join me. It is definitely something I've, I've, learned over the years to have a more hands-off approach to training um, mm -hmm. because uh, especially in IT especially like uh, training callers that would call in and ask for help on stuff it's like about half of that to a quarter to half you got to train people on like so this process broke due to recent update we now have to have you do this process and they've like maybe sent an email on from like up top down and then people call up and say like, oh, I don't know how to do this. It's like, all right, uh, let me, let me train you on how to do this. And um, let me tell you, it, it is tricky training some people. Um, <laughs> yeah. You, you have to be willing first. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult, like um, teaching and training and yeah imparting knowledge because everybody learns differently and needs different you know strategies i think and methods to succeed in learning and so you just have to be kind of endlessly adaptable yeah so that's where when i do like uh i did two recordings of obs um where i went through and i was just like let me tell you everything that I did here. Let me break it all down because I got to fix it all. So I might as well mm -hmm. record it and share it. Yeah. So when I share that with people, I say, okay, you know, if you, if you come across a list of challenging bits that you didn't understand or you, you felt uncomfortable with, 
give me a list of like 10 of them and then I'll record a part three. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I, I want to do more stuff like that too. I want to do more material that shows like my, my technical training, my audiobook reading to, uh, maybe get some, uh, random people out there that might be like, Hey, I'm looking for someone like you. Um, yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Right. I mean, why not? You know, like if you feel up to making the content, you know, if you feel up to like expressing yourself in that way, uh, yeah, just do it and put it out there and you never know who will who will run into it, um, you know, or who will find it helpful. Like that's one of the things that like keeps me coming back to Twitter is that like stuff that like I'll just go off about and, you know, just tweet these threads about. And, you know, just kind of then, you know, it gets let loose into the wild, you know, then sometimes you have like really heartwarming responses from people where it's like, wow, I'm really glad that I said this, that I did this, that I put this out there because somebody else apparently did need to see it or like it did make a positive impact in their life. Yeah, I've replied to a few of your uh, tweet threads and said that I liked, like, I've, I've replied positively. Um, yeah. And uh, it's been, uh, you, you write insightful material. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, it's not one of those things that, like, I can really plan. Like, as I said, it's just got to be something where... You know, I just feel like I need to sit down and kind of type out a bunch of, like, impassioned, like, short messages <laughs> about whatever this thing is that uh, that I'm, you know, usually mad about. Honestly, most of the, like, threads that I do is, like, rooted in something that I'm mad about, which is very much me having, like, an Aries 7 house with uh, the moon and Mars there. Um but, you know, that's what people respond to. And so I'm like, okay, there's clearly this, like, vein of, like, you know, of, you know, and I like to think that, like, if I speak in any kind of anger, that hopefully it's a, you know, a righteous anger, I guess, if you will, you know, a, a just anger, you know, not something that's, like, hatred, I guess. Yeah. When I would assess your tweets as um, they all have have this implication at the start and they never you never really say it, but you always you always have the implication of let me clear this up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me set something straight here. Yeah. in that that setting it straight or setting it clear um is is like what you're advocating for that's like here is something that i feel has gone awry that i feel is confusing that i feel can be harmful to others i yeah. need this to change in this direction here's here's me going off on this topic for uh like five to seven tweets and then uh heading on out for the moment and that's it right because i just like let it like i just like put it there and i'm just like boom and then, like, people can just sit there and kind of digest it at their leisure. And then I've gotten all of that, like, Aries kind of, like, fire sort of out, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's big <laughs> Jupiter square Mars energy. That kind of, like, I think this is wrong and I'm going to fix it, you know? And I want to see it fixed. You know, actually taking action on the things to, like, upset and, like, bother you. I you know, even great. if it is just, like, writing some spicy tweets. <laughs> Um, so I follow some people that, that are, are significantly spicier than you. Uh, mm -hmm. I've come to realize over the past like two months, it's like, oh, uh, these people are, are very, very, very spicy. Uh, <laughs> and so like, you know, you go like, um, you go look at like, so when I go get canned food, I'll go look to see like, they have a new label of like mild to wild and they have like the kind of you know the the whole like how much of uh how how much scoville does this uh have for spices but they always have oh, like a yeah. little diagram and so i think that it, it like a, you don't realize until you're kind of in it and then out of it it's like 
oh, I've been following a lot of wild people when I thought they were more like closer to mild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I guess they just, you know, got wilder as time went on. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, it, like, especially when it comes to like disability advocacy or, or trans advocacy, it's like you can you can find yourself fighting something and fighting while um, doing your best to be logical and emotionally stable. But then it's so easy to dip into that hatred. It's such a, um, if we look at hatred from like maybe a positive perspective, there's a lot of energy to draw from that. There's, it's a big well and there's a lot of energy to dip into. Um, it just, that's when things get really out of control and really wild. So it's almost like, that makes it really spicy and really entertaining and, and interesting. But as far as if it actually is helpful, um, I would almost say that it is borderline not, but I do see some positive results on occasion. So it's like, it's not a hundred percent. No, but it's, it's definitely something that, uh, there are people doing that and, uh, that's not me. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't see, for me personally, I don't see much of a point of like arguing kind of like online um, for one. Uh, like, I don't know. I just, you know, I think I saw somebody actually today talking about it. It's like, before I get into an argument with somebody is like, do I actually, would I actually like respect and value their opinion outside of this current discussion that we're having? Mm. And it's like, if the answer is no, then like, I'm not going to bother like arguing with them to like prove my point, like being right or whatever, because what, what do I care? You know, if I don't care about their opinion on other stuff. <laughs> I'm silently chuckling because I'm, I'm, my brain is, is firing off on this, on this shirt I found. Um, I'm oh. pulling it up on my side. Um, so this shirt uh, is from the abolitionist, um, I believe that's the right word, uh, fighting fighting against slavery, um, okay. John Brown. And right, ah, uh, yes. So there's a shirt that, that I found um, that says, uh, this is what John Brown wrote. Uh, Brown once wrote, I don't argue with, or no, this is something that... Um, some the the person making the shirt said about john brown uh the shirt says and i'll post the link after uh, my phone works uh well i don't argue with people john brown would have shot <laughs> right it's, it's like it's choosing it's choosing your you know it's it's i don't know i don't know how cliche of a phrase it is but you know choosing your battles yeah indeed it, it is choosing your battles and uh, i'll paste that link in your chat if that's cool yeah, go ahead. Cool. Because that, that was like when you were talking about all that, like would I respect the other person's opinion? It's like, yeah, it's something that I try to keep this in mind that everyone and everything has a right to exist. Everyone yeah. and everything has a right to have have these bad takes, if you will. It just is a matter mm -hmm. of is that bad take going to try to take me down? And if so, I have to defend myself. <laughs> right. Well, like, this is kind of the whole thing about, like, there are certain things that you can debate and, you know, uh, like, people's right to exist is not something you can debate, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, like, debating whether or not trans people exist, basically, or whether, like, you know, transness is, you know, a real thing is not okay like we can debate about like pizza toppings or like you can debate like political positions but you know and even then only some political positions because if i don't know if you've seen that like fucking bullshit uh law that they're proposing out of indiana and like a bunch of other places about like well you have to be impartial and you can't blame uh you can't say certain groups such as like the nazis are um like of low moral character or whatever like uh, fuck we're it, <laughs> you know come on and then like all this other stuff that basically gives like parents and then like this nebulous like education committee that doesn't have to be made up of teachers the right to like veto 
basically any part of the curriculum that they don't like. Um, yeah, I, this is another reason that like, I'm honestly like glad that I'm not having children because I cannot imagine trying to send them to school, you know, now, like, especially where I live in Florida, like, ugh, like trying to get my child educated at a Florida public school, you know, with how they're handling COVID and then just how, with how they like handle curriculum and stuff in general, like, Shout out to all the parents out there. Like, you are really just making it work. Uh, and I salute you for that because it is a tough job. So I got I got to say, going back that step about the Illinois school system. Mm -hmm. So didn't the Blues Brothers in 1980 iron mm -hmm. this all out with, with the famous phrase, and it showed up on the screen on my side, I hate Illinois Nazis. Didn't they right. didn't they iron that out in the 80s like what are we fucking doing? <laughs> well, you know, everything that you iron eventually does become wrinkled and need to get ironed and starched again. And uh here we are. It's 2022. Yeah. So what is that? Uh 42 years later people have 42 years, yeah. I mean I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go out on limb here and say that mm -hmm. I imagine it's because in 1980, World War II was still fresh in the minds of many people. Mm -hmm. Where now it's like, uh, unfortunately, that that word, the the word after Illinois. I'm not gonna say it once more. Mm -hmm. Has been taken as like, oh, you're you're just a grammar freak. You know, yeah. kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. So by watering down that word, watering down the language mm -hmm. about it, now it's yeah. become more okay um, compared to, um, I don't know, like at, at most maybe like an academic study to see like here is the logic and how it went wrong compared to, oh yeah, just go ahead and read it all and, and support it and then blast it everywhere. And as long as you don't say the word, and say what you mean you can get away with a lot it's like stop that <laughs> what are we doing <laughs> yeah uh if there's one good thing uh like not to be political here so just mm -hmm. as a disclaimer the one good thing i've seen a lot about a lot of uh bread tube people as they kind mm -hmm. of are called is that what what people like Sean will do or Thought Slime will do is they'll they'll cover topics and they'll say like here's what you can identify as fascism and here's how you can how you can see the language being used mm -hmm. twisted around in certain ways. Right. So there is a political bias, yes. However, yeah. you can still look at that and say, Oh, I see the, the rhetoric of debate being used in this regard and I don't want to be part of that so now i know now i have the the logical tools even if these are extremely left-leaning biased um so it it you you can pick and choose from a lot of sources but i would prefer the sources that aren't uh bigoted uh <laughs> right just putting it out well there. like media literacy should really be like some kind of a required education you know, like actually learning to like investigate your sources and like evaluate their beliefs and values and, you know, yeah, just think critically about what you're consuming and about who's telling you this story, you know, like I hadn't really noticed it until the last couple of years, but the amount of like basically news articles that essentially get written like by the police department and then disseminated without second thought by like local and like national media, you know, that's a complete fabrication of the actual events that happened that, you know, the initial version for the police happens to make them look much better than the actual situation was, you know, and I hadn't really noticed it until the last couple of years with people pointing it out. And then, you know, now I, I see it and I understand it more. But, you know, I wasn't aware of it until I was educated. Yeah, that is definitely, uh, <laughs> I want to say that's more of like a societal goal of, of the U.S. That mm -hmm. I think, I, I think it's like the freedom to do whatever you want, 
should not mean the freedom to be as as ignorant or as arrogant as you want. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, and I have the freedom that if somebody is being, you know, ignorant and arrogant like that, I have the freedom to exclude them from my life. You know, like in as much as, you know, I have control over the spheres that I exist in and everything, um, you know, like your freedom to be an asshole also gives me the freedom to tell you that you're being an asshole. Yeah, it's something that I've I've realized with this. It's like, so say you have a debate with someone. It's like, all right, you know, you have the right to think however you want. And the, the person would be like, oh, cool, I get to think however I want. But that means I get to think however I want. No, you can't. You, you can't think that way. Like, yeah, right. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, oh, God. Yeah, like just arguing about all of that stuff. It's, it's like you can't, like, get into my brain and, like, tell me that what I'm. Yeah, it's just, you know, I see it a lot with, like you know, like transphobes and stuff is it's like, I don't know how to communicate to you like what my lived experience is like, like without you literally physically being in my like body and being me, you know? Um, But, you know, just because it's the whole kind of thing of like prioritizing academic and like quote unquote hard evidence Mm. um over lived experience and you know either somatic knowledge so like you know knowledge that lives in the body or um spoken knowledge you know from like traditions that didn't you know write things down you know there are all kinds of ways that knowledge can be stored and communicated and it doesn't make it any less valid just because you know nobody's done a thesis on it or you know, pu- publications or, you know, their textbooks or whatever about it. If there's not a 10 minute video essay on it or a Ted talk, that means it's still valid. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Like, you know, um, there are a lot more things that are valid, you know, than currently exist in your kind of worldview and your viewpoint, you know, and I think that we should approach life as more of, you know, when we run into these things being like, Oh, Hmm. Okay. You know, how does this square up with my, like, previous ideas and perceptions and stuff? And how do I feel like this, you know, interacts with me and my personal kind of, yeah, system of of beliefs and stuff? You know, taking it and evaluating it and then choosing to, you know, uh, accept or reject it, you know, appropriately. Or, you know, figuring out what kind of relationship you want to have with it whether it's an idea or a person or a thing or whatever. Yeah. it's and Sometimes you can make those judgments like quickly. Like I can scroll past somebody just saying some really like bigoted stuff on Twitter. And I'm like, okay, well that's a really easy block because like, I'll just go to their timeline. And it's just full of that. And I can see that they're clearly just a troll or just somebody who like has nothing better to do. And so that's a very quick decision making process, but sometimes it takes a while, like if it's a person, for you to get to know them and talk to them and then go through maybe some conflicts of opinion and finally reach a point where you're like, you know, we clearly just can't come to a satisfactory compromise um, about some of these things that we disagree on very heavily. And so, you know, we're going to have to modify or end our relationship in some way, you know. Yeah, that's like the that tweet I have pinned on my on my Twitter that mm-hmm. I say like you know we have the twenty six letters of the alphabet, and uh, if this is uh, I'm gonna show this on the screen and link to it um, because I I think that that's a worthwhile thing to have on a social media platform that's so willing to engage in cancel culture and kangaroo courts of of debates that aren't really debates. Um, so the tweet goes like this, uh, let's say we have 26 topics of discussion. Each relates to a letter of an alphabet. What happens when we disagree over D and V are D and V small or big deals? If small, we agree to disagree. If big, we must work through our disagreement in amicable form. If not, we lose. I feel I feel really good about that. And plus, it was like me working through a typeface. So it was like <laughs> double, double the, the good of that. Um, 
Right. Yeah. You were like, oh yeah, this like, I guess metaphor or like explanation really closely relates to something that, you know, I've been kind of currently doing. And so it's a really useful framing mechanism, I guess you could say for, for that sort of argument. Yeah. And a lot of that is just because I think what it is, is that so many people will only focus on the V and they'll, they'll only look at this V and say, okay, this is, this is all this person is. It's just like this V perspective. Whereas there's the whole alphabet and maybe, maybe if the, if you just say, all right, with a V, like maybe it's a big deal, but I can't change your mind. So can we, can we just kind of like leave that at the door? And I feel like that's kind of where with maybe, maybe less, it, with online cultures, you can just like block someone and go. Whereas yeah. when you have to interact with the person in person, um, mm -hmm. like your neighbor, let's say your neighbor has this difference of opinion that is like, you know, like, um, the opposite political opinion or something like that, like uh, yeah. emblazed on, on the, the neighbor's uh, porch or whatever. It's like, you have to either ignore that, that neighbor, or you have to be civil enough to not like be throwing like pop pipe, pipe bombs at them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or well, at least if right. you do, don't, don't get caught. Um. <laughs> yeah. Wear gloves. Uh, yeah. And it's really challenging. It's something that um, it does require a lot of empathy. And I think, I think now we're almost at a point where we're we're not practicing empathy as much, uh, it, which is causing a little bit of this kind of Twitter rift to say that, oh, hey, we can't, you know, here's someone that that wrote something. Yeah, I don't like this. Block it. And it's like, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and everybody has a choice as to how they want to curate their life experiences, basically, you know. Um, you know, if you have more time and patience and if you feel like it's more worthwhile talking to some of these people, you know, then go for it, you know. But, uh, yeah, I just am generally kind of like, yeah, very heavy with the block button. Um, cause I just don't, I don't feel like most of the time that any of these discussions that I'm going to have are going to be productive. Cause again, most of the time, it's like the only time that I feel like that I need to speak up about stuff is stuff where the person is already probably pretty dug in anyways, because it's generally some kind of like, um, bigotry, you yeah. know? Um, and so it's like, it's really hard to convince a bigot to not, you know, to not be. Um, that's really one of those things that has to come from like internal growth and like, obviously people, you know, if they can, I guess, you know, help educate that person. That's great. But like, you know, I personally don't, I don't have the like time or like patience or education or anything like that to actually sit down with these people and possibly have conversations that might eventually make them reflect on and change their opinion. You know, but some people just love going to town in people's mentions and doing this stuff. And like, thank goodness for them, you know, because other people, even if they don't like the tweets or whatever, you know, are obviously reading them and interacting with them. And, you know, who knows who it could be helpful for. So, you know, yeah, it's uh, everybody has, I guess, different ways that they can, you know, contribute to these to these things or uh yeah yeah there are bits of like going back to the idea with goals it's like mm -hmm. i i've i've thought about is my goal to advocate for issues and advocate for you know human rights that that either i am directly or indirectly involved with and how much of that advocacy will will involve me debating or arguing or having conflicts with others mm -hmm. versus me just doing my own thing and and just uh um probably this is why many people are like you know in my space and my 
in in my broadcast there's no political or religious conversation because it, it isn't that it, it isn't that it is completely not okay it's i believe that they're using the these broadcasters are using the wrong kind of language um and i'm, I'm saying this with all all due respect um what what the the rule should actually be is no intense debates with these two as subject matters because they will frequently evoke this impassioned debate between two or more people yeah right <laughs> um, no hot button topics yeah no hot button topics because it could be even like you know, should we have more pretzel buns in stores? Like that could be a hot button yeah. debate for people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because it's like, you could absolutely have somebody being like, well, I can't even find enough, like, I don't know, regular gluten-free buns or whatever. And you're over here talking about adding more like buns that I can't eat, you know, and people could fight about it or people could be like, Oh, well, pretzel buns are so like played out. <laughs> and I wish that they would actually stop like other kinds of buns. And who are you people who are still clinging on to pretzel buns? you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And so it... <laughs> people will fight about anything if you give them the opportunity to. Yeah. Uh, and I, that's why I do appreciate folks that, that are just like, yeah, keep it all at the door. Um, we're just here to, to have a good time to, you know, say like watch, watch someone play video games. And it's like anything you want to talk that's in more depth go take it to discord or go take it to your direct messages. Uh. Right. No. And I, I agree with that. You know, um, I think it's really difficult to have any kind of productive conversation in a chat room environment like this. Um, you know, especially when, Oh my God, especially when it's like larger channels and you just see so many people having like all of these like fights basically in chat and all of these like 15 different discussions going at once. Um, like I changed the channel last night. I was watching a stream. Um, excuse me. I was watching, uh, cheese. Who's another super Mario 64 runner who was talking about that. Um, his family, and I think now him, uh, have, or have had, uh, COVID. And so then there was just all this discussion. This is a guy who is a Twitch partner and who on average, I would say has, you know, one to 2000 viewers, you know, oh, wow. um, okay. every, every broadcast, you know, so a very large audience. Um, and just the amount of just like the amount of just like ignorance in the chat and the amount of just like ridiculous, like posturing and fighting and stuff that was going on. I was just like, I'm not even interested in watching this anymore because like, you know, and this can be one of those things about like having chat on screen. It's just like, I was just sitting there like just watching this like chat full of all just fucking ridiculous bullshit going by. And I was like, I don't want to watch this. Like, because I, I feel upset by what they're saying, but like, there is no way it's going to be productive for me to engage with it. So then the only other thing that I can do to, deal with the situation is just to get myself out of it so i switch channels you know yeah i'm i'm down with that i i know exactly that feeling where it's like um i i honestly i've blocked a few different variations of all the well at least all the COVID stuff on, on twitter up until uh mm -hmm. the newest strain uh changing the lingo and changing mm -hmm how people will talk about it. Now it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go in and block all this new, these new block words. All these new ones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it's like also for a certain uh, three letter acronym relating to a certain kind of uh, currency. <laughs> mm. Oh <laughs> I just, yeah. I block it all. Um, I have my opinion on it. Um, but I don't, I, uh, this is the thing that I, I think of when it comes to, um, whether it's debates or goals or miscommunication is I am not knowledgeable enough on certain topics to communicate effectively on those topics to say, yeah, here's my opinion and why, 
Um, mm -hmm. So instead, it's like, I just won't engage with that, that certain uh, three letter acronym uh, mm -hmm. people, like just the ones that, that make it their whole identity to be all about, yes, this is what I believe in. It's like, I, I, I don't have the energy to engage in this. Um, Right. Like what those people need is like cult deprogramming. Like you zombie paper talking to them on Twitter is not going to get them out of the chokehold of these shitty monkey pick crews. Yeah. Uh, and it's sad. I have a, I have a friend of mine that, that has since moved out of, out of the country, but uh, uh, this friend of mine, he is, he is knee deep in this. And it's like, I was talking to uh, some other friends of mine, uh, one is located in Brazil and another one is in Colombia. And I was like, yeah, my buddy in, in Ecuador is, is knee deep in this. And I, mm -hmm. it's a cult and I can't get him out of it. And it's just yeah. one of those, it, it was like my, my, uh, my buddy from Brazil was like, yeah, it, it's a really bad cult. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Because it's like, that's the thing. It's like you go to these people's like Twitters and that's all they talk about. Like, again, it's the same thing with TERFs. It's like you just go to their Twitter and it's like, have you considered doing something that isn't like being obsessed with trans people? Like you could like read other books or you could like go outside or fucking, I don't know, do literally anything else rather than sit here and tweet endlessly <laughs> about how much you hate trans people um like get a fucking hobby that isn't this you know and it's like the same thing with like you know uh those three letter fake money people um <laughs> is you know it's just their entire identity and like all they want to talk about and all of their friends are into it and everything that they do is centered around it and it's like i oh okay sure like, you know, those people believe, I guess, probably in that stuff as deeply as, like, I believe in, I don't know, astrology or whatever, you know? And it's like, I know that nobody could come into my mentions and start, like, dissuading me over Twitter, you know? So I know that I certainly am not going to do that for them. So just be gone. Shoo. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I was laughing through all of that because uh, I had mentioned in the pre-show and I mentioned it in my podcast yesterday with uh, Nigel mm -hmm. Neverland that um, when it comes to haters, it's like that amount of passion is really a, a sort of a, like these people are just looking for holes in your argument. So yeah. these people are actually like really great, excellent editors. Mm -hmm. so they're right. yeah. they're providing a service to me and to you and to others so um it's actually a really nice kind thing to have haters that are that passionate about i'm gonna i'm gonna try to find the hole in your argument about like astrology or, or writing yeah or i'm gonna try and find like the dirt that i can pull out and go aha <laughs> you know but it's like no you're just gonna keep digging and you're not gonna find anything wrong and you're just going to continue proving me right, you know, uh, and hey, Sendly. Uh, but yeah, it's like, you know, fine. Like, you want to, you know, critique me that much? Like, go ahead. Like, you know, I stand behind whatever I said. Like, I just tweeted about this the other day about like if, um, oh, my God, what was it? It was about, oh, it was about like people who always make the argument about veganism about like, well, what about food deserts? And what about this? And what about that? You know, as excuses for why they personally can't or won't go vegan or try reducing their animal product consumption. And it's like, don't weaponize other people's struggles to cover for your own refusal to engage with your like feelings and actions. Like, just be honest. I would rather you just be honest about what you do. Um, you know, instead of trying to make up all this stuff to sort of cover it. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's one of the problems with, uh, speaking of miscommunication is that people don't know what, what is actually going on in, in the head. So it, it's like, if I imagine like a transphobe is, 
is concerned about X or Y, and that becomes a major part. Well, of... they're very concerned about X and Y and which yeah. combinations that you have. Yeah, uh, in accidental, but yes, you have you have uh, you have created some good insight there that the these transphobes are very concerned over X and Ys, and they're concerned over the particulars of this when it's like so so what is the real problem here like what is your real concern and then having yeah. that something it's like oh um you're concerned over finding a mate and making sure that that mate is someone that you can reproduce with mm -hmm. and you want that to be clear well that isn't a transphobic argument that's not something that people are actively like trying to hide that by way of like trying deception it's trying to hide it to survive um so if if we can disseminate certain bits like that we can reduce the power of transphobia um at least i believe but it, it does take a lot of of willing to go the distance like willow on twitch she's great about like not blocking people right off hand but letting them play their card to see oh this person is a transphobe compared to someone that is just being a real like lack of knowledge understanding person <laughs> right yeah right there's the difference between transphobia and trans unfamiliarity you know like we were talking earlier about like being able to do math i guess is you know an example and there was some other stuff about like doing laundry or whatever and it's like you know, if a person just genuinely, like, has not been exposed to, like, any kind of pro-trans sentiments or media or anything, you know, if they just kind of haven't gotten those, you know, an opportunity to receive those messages, then yeah, like, you know, people who are willing to be really patient um, and provide that education are really valuable. You know, it's just that so many people, like, have all of these resources available and then just choose to like not engage like not learn anything yeah it's definitely something of like don't feed the the trolls but see maybe if what happens that needs to happen is that the trolls just need to be trained in a different way to then mm -hmm. <laughs> reduce well, and you hate. can always tell like you can always tell a troll versus somebody who's just like uninformed and maybe being kind of edgy i feel like because trolls just trolls are gonna troll i can smell a troll a mile away you know like i was raised on the internet despite what some gen zers might say about them being the first internet generation like i was talking with my therapist about this yesterday i have been on the internet for probably about 26 of my 31 years of life you know, uh, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I lived through AOL, I lived through fucking early 4chan and something awful and, you know, whatever, like, you can't kill me. Yeah. Um, and I can smell you from a mile away, you know, but like people who just are genuinely just kind of like uninformed or underinformed um you know that's a different story and like i have seen like in people's chats like people having good thoughtful discussions where somebody's like hey you know i hadn't really considered that perspective and like thanks for taking the time to talk to me yeah it's something that it's like um thinking from the approach of like transphobia or using um incorrect pronouns at mm -hmm. someone um, that could be rather than a a transphobic action that could be a, a linguistic shortcoming where the person just might not know the best way to use uh, gender inclusive language in a, in a mindset where it's like I have to remember all these details I have to remember all this and so rather than the default or not the default but I would say that some people go with the approach of like this is too difficult. Screw it. I'm not going to deal with it. Yeah. It, especially if people are going to get upset with me, no matter how much I try. So I'm mm -hmm. going to get doubly more. I'm going to double down on that bad, bad behavior mm -hmm. instead. It should be like, you know, Hey, this is a learning process. We're going to make mistakes. Um, the reason why people get upset is not out of anger, but just out of like 
like rubbing up against a wound, opening up that mm-hmm. wound, like you, you gave this analogy last time we talked about this. Yeah. That it, it's not like you're, it, it isn't like you're actively being really super offensive. It's just you're opening up a wound, which is an offense, mm-hmm. but that yeah. wound wasn't caused by you. Yeah, That's but it's tr- still painful. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. And that's challenging to work through. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, we got some recipes going on in the chat. Oh yeah, I am. Uh, I'm definitely going to be appreciative of uh, of those recipes, Sindley. I did manage to make. I mean, I will say this: Bisquick, you know, is definitely a great way to just make like your basic, you know, your basic kind of like picture book pancake, you know, Mm. like it's not like the fancy, you know, kind of lacy sort of looking ones, you know, it's just your nice, like kind of round, well-browned pancake with a slight white edge around it. Um, But it doesn't work well for waffles for some reason, like with, you know, vegan swaps. So, but I have a waffle maker and I love eating waffles. (laughs) Like I would definitely make, waffles a lot more often if i had a good waffle batter recipe um and yeah and i'm always pro cobbler as well i keep think we keep talking about doing some baking but then it's just like you know you kind of it, it is something that's labor intensive you know although it is less so with two people involved which is nice but you know it just always kind of gets away from you and i'm like yeah i understand why like i've never really used them because my mom baked a lot and so we never used like the pre-made cookie dough and stuff but i'm like i understand why it exists like you know uh you know you take a package you heat up the oven you know you throw it in there and you have cookies in 10 minutes like i understand this <laughs> i'm i'm getting amused by jordy saying oh do not get elmore started on the differences between waffles and pancakes I mean, they are like, you know, different, you know, food items, but like, I love them both very much, you know, uh, you know, I'm not trying to pit one against the other here, certainly, you know, and people have different expectations about waffles, you know, uh, and pancakes, like I was saying earlier, you know, do you want the kind of more, what I would say is like a basic pancake, you know, that's just like a simple kind of browned you know, little pancake like this, or do you want like a fancy, like, you know, a buttermilk pancake or something like that? Or like, um, I used to make cinnamon swirl pancakes, which were really nice, Um, which wasn't too difficult. You basically just make like a cinnamon sugar butter kind of paste almost that you can, (laughs) it sounds kind of gross, Hmm. but you mix up like a cinnamon sugar butter essentially like just enough like butter to kind of bind it together you don't want it to be super heavy but you need it to be like squeezable basically like extrudable um from a bag or like a piping bag Mm -hmm. and then you just you know you ladle out your pancake batter onto your grill and then while obviously the top is still very raw you know pretty much immediately after you put it down you pipe a big swirl of that cinnamon sugar butter mixture into the pancake. So, you know, I do like a swirl, you know, from the inside out and then, you know, you just let that cook and then you flip it and then you have this nice like cinnamon, the cinnamon swirl in a pancake. And so, you know, I think that's a nice way to kind of make them fancy without like a humongous amount of effort, but I never knew the construction of pancakes like that, but, uh, that makes a lot of sense, and that is uh, uh, very insightful. I don't think that's uh, – I think you were saying that that was a little bit kind of weird or disgusting. I don't see that at all. <laughs> well, I mean, just, you know, I, I I mean, part of the thing with food is that it's kind of gross in the preparation, <laughs> but then it's good when you're done, you know? Um, like, yeah, I definitely have – a lot more understanding for people who just and maybe i'll start doing this even it's just like wearing disposable gloves the entire time that you're cooking not just for hygiene but for for me as a very texture and sensory sensitive person like cooking can be kind of like you know cooking and baking can kind of make me feel gross sometimes because 
having my hands like covered in like like cookie dough i mm. don't like like forming like cookies by hand like without gloves but with gloves it's fine i'll do it all day you know because it's not getting all over my skin and like you know that kind of thing um but yeah that e word was probably the thing that made uh it was the the part that was extrusion. a little bit extrusion <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and sinja like yeah you can you know you can definitely get like the thicker ones like that you know um i think it just depends on what you want to do um i mean for me most of the time it's just like whatever i'm using that stuff for gets gross enough that i'm like i'd rather just you know peel it off like a hospital you know like a, a surgeon and just you know throw them away yeah yeah that's uh I haven't had a lot of experience with getting my hands mixed up in, in food making. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I would typically use utensils and all that. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, there's just some stuff where like, you need to get your hands in there. Like, uh, a lot of like cookies, uh, like that, that need to be hand shaped meatloaf, meatballs, any kind of, you know, ground protein or, you know, mash kind of being formed into something else. Um, but you know, there are also, there are always, yeah, alternatives. Um, yeah. Cookie scoops. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ice cream scoops, that kind of thing. Um, you know. Oh, and also Jordy regarding the, like, not wanting to use the same mix for pancakes and waffles. I respect that as a perspective, but it's not going to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, that reminded me. So um, this was just before my surgery in August 2020. Uh, uh -huh. I went to have my first plate of waffles and chicken. Oh, nice. And how did you like it? I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like i get why people like this i get why this is such a big like deal because you have you have the the simple carbs mm -hmm. you have the protein and then it's all really fat like you know like fat protein carbs mm -hmm. is well balanced mm -hmm. um and the flavors interact well with each other. So it's really oh, nice. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I didn't realize this. And then I, I did. And I was just like, hey, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, like it's a nice it's definitely a real rib stick and breakfast, you know. Um, oh, my God. I saw speaking of breakfast stuff. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll I'll talk about more good breakfast stuff after this, but I just had to share this terrible breakfast thing that I saw today. <laughs> which was um, Denny's was tweeting about all of their like different, like I think like eggs Benedict dishes and like egg dishes. And I saw this picture that they have of this prime rib eggs Benedict that you can get. Like, and it's just like a big, like, you know, big chunks of like a big, you know, piece of like prime rib. Mm. And then, you know, you're like over easy or like sunny side up eggs on top and then your hollandaise sauce. And I was just looking at it and like um, uh, some people here may know Seb, uh, who guests a lot on uh, Joe, a.k.a. Horatio Outside's channel. Uh, and Seb referred to it as instant gout, which I definitely <laughs> agreed with. Um, I was like, I said it was a real medieval king, like breakfast. Um, uh, but, you know, I don't know. Like, that's somebody's dream breakfast out there. And who am I to stop them from eating it? Yeah. Um, well, shout out to Sheb Seb as well, but... Uh... It's always something like you look at like uh, the Hawaiian dish of loco moco, and that mm. is just like. Are you familiar with that? I am. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you look at that and you think like that's like a heart attack waiting to happen. Um, mm. But then you say to yourself, you know, the the pragmatic reason behind this is that um, people in Hawaii needed to have uh, a lot of lot of material in. It going through and, and fueling their bodies in order to go do work 
So yeah, like if you're busy, you need to eat big, like nutrient dense meals, you know, but like most people now it's like people are like, oh, I feel like shit after I like go out to eat. And I'm like, yeah, because you're like eating food that was like the recipes were made when like you would eat that at 5 a.m. and then go out and fucking chop wood and, uh, you know, uh, like cut grass with a scythe and, you know haul some like baby lambs around on your shoulders mm -hmm. like <laughs> you know yeah it's no wonder that like you know uh you might feel like garbage after eating some of this stuff but you know who am, again who am i to tell you what to do you have to deal with your own body and if you don't mind feeling like that because you enjoy the pleasure of eating that food okay like legitimately if you've worked through it and that is a fine exchange to make for you Fine. You know, again, I'm not going to come to your house and take the food out of your mouth. I'm not going to go to Denny's and like slap your fork out of your hand. I just personally think it's think it's gross and a bad idea. Oh, uh, I, I, I see the word break. I want to conclude we with one thought. Uh, maybe then yeah. you can conclude with a thought there something too. nicer that isn't talking about this prime rib eggs benedict yeah oh yeah i was just gonna say that with <laughs> it folks it's like it yeah. work is really hard labor it is it mm -hmm. is hard mental labor like like broadcasting mm -hmm. it it's not physical labor but it's mental labor so yeah. i've seen uh, I've seen many people in, in the information technology field with varying health conditions of mm -hmm. like various kinds of cancers or various kinds of illnesses that are, mm -hmm. are chronic conditions. And I realized uh, some years ago that, like I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to diagnose these people, but I've realized yeah. that a lot of these people are under a lot of stress. And mm -hmm. that would in part be like you know they go out to eat to feel better you have mm -hmm. some delicious food so you feel good but then overall mm -hmm. you have a bad mindset a bad reaction to stress that then ruins parts of your body um that's my theory anyways uh, and, and yeah. i'm sticking to it <laughs> well i mean you know about like eating like really like nutrient dense calorie dense i guess i should say more so calorie dense oftentimes um foods like as a stress response and like it was talking about looking at a number of like symptoms um or expressions of autism as pretty reasonable uh responses to tremendous amounts of stress constantly being put on the body by having to cope for being an autistic person in a non-autistic world in an allistic world mm -hmm. and one of those things is talking about, are you familiar with the concept of same foods or safe foods? Same or safe foods? No, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's pretty common a lot of like among a lot of specifically autistic, but possibly also ADHD and other neurodivergent people, but having foods that are safe to you where it's a food that like if you're a person who really struggles with eating whether for texture reasons temperature reasons flavor reasons um you know you do see stories of like oh this kid will only eat this very specific type of like breakfast biscuit um and that is the only thing that they will eat and then finding that food, you know, for them. And I've seen stuff about like, oh, they've discontinued this like one type of like chicken nugget or whatever that my child would eat. And like, they won't eat anything other than this, you know? And I mean, it affects adults too, to be fair. I don't want to make it just sound like children, but, um, you know, I definitely have like same foods and safe foods, like Morningstar, <laughs> Morningstar, buffalo or plain chicken patties to make a chicken sandwich uh chocolate soylent either as a shake or a powder um you know i might have one or two other things that kind of you know that are on that same list but it's a lot of those foods that people tend to have as same foods or safe foods tend to be high fat high sugar high calorie you know these kinds of things and so it's like yeah if you're constantly stressed, 
Like if you're constantly just feeling like super stressed and your whole system and your whole body feels super stressed, then yeah, you're going to want to eat the same stuff all the time just to give your body some sense of safety and normalcy and, you know, uh, constancy, I guess. And so like thinking about it from that perspective, I thought it was really interesting because yeah, like I definitely struggle more with food when I am under higher stress versus when I'm under lower stress, I find it easier to cope with like food changes or trying different foods or, you know, things like that. So while you're looking, while you're talking about that, I was trying to look up the Wikipedia uh, analog to that, and I found um, this article about avoidant slash restrictive food intake disorder. Yeah, ARFID. Yeah. Yeah, that talks about uh, that has a bit on autism. So I yeah. thought that was. And it's, uh... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's yeah, it's it's just it's really difficult. Like. I, I don't know. I mean, I've never been like diagnosed by a doctor. I know people have a lot of different opinions Oops. about self-diagnosis, but the criteria for that definitely match up a lot with issues that I've had in my life about, about food and about eating food. And it's really frustrating sometimes. Um, but, you know, all we can try to do going through life is being empathetic of other people's choices and trusting that if they're making that choice, that they're making it based off of the best available information they have about themselves and their body. Yeah, this will be a, my concluding point on this is that as far yeah. as like self-diagnosis, um, mm -hmm. I think that is like going back to my three steps of learning. So you, mm -hmm. you read on Wikipedia, not sponsored, you dig in a little bit deeper, and then you go to an expert. That is the step three is you talk to a doctor or an expert and you say, I think I might have this based on what mm -hmm. I understand my life to be. Um, and I think that if, if you don't have that available, then that's, that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. I have just seen it where people, uh, I am thinking of one person in particular, but I won't try to like single out this one person. So I'll say in general, yeah. I have seen people try to say that, Oh, I'm autistic. Uh, therefore I get to act in this way. And it's like, Mm -hmm. right no as an excuse or a cover for your behavior yes, yeah exactly. i have seen that as well people being like well you can't <laughs> expect me to be empathetic or to care about this because i'm autistic and i'm like that is not the way this works <laughs> like yeah um yeah okay i guess i guess yeah we'll leave that concluding thought there as a concluding thought uh so that we can actually take a break yay break time so yay. stretch stretch your legs uh don't worry about being back on on the bell um <laughs> this isn't yeah. a, this isn't a class uh so i was gonna say yeah i don't think i have any <laughs> bell work to do that i need to be back in time for <laughs> oh I'm, all right uh yeah we'll see you all soon I'll have my five minute break on. And if it rotates a few times, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. All right. See you in a bit. Hey, we're back. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, hopefully your break was uh, good. Uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Hello, zombie paper. Hello, Bello Beluga over on twitch.tv slash. Uh, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? I hope that you had a good break. I did, actually. Um, so I am on a new medication of gabapentin once more. Okay. Uh, originally, I was prescribed it when I was having my uh, slipped disc issue. So uh, naturally, a... Uh, I believe it's an anticonvulsant, but it's used for nerve treatment. So mm -hmm. naturally using the wrong medication for the wrong treatment will not work. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, wow. Oh, I thought you said you weren't a doctor. Uh, Dr. Zombie paper is, uh, is not a studied licensed practitioner. Um, so don't, don't consult me for medical advice. However, um, I do medical analysis to read over things. Um, and I, I have it all very clear in my 
on my materials of like, you know, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I'm doing a lot of research here. <laughs> yeah, just very a very well informed, uh, I guess, civilian, if you will. Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, like in IT, like you get someone that that calls up and um, knows the lingo, if you will, where it's like, okay, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need to like down, uh, like not like down uh talk down to people but i need to translate it. i need to think of like mm -hmm. all right so how do i describe this in civilian terms and then it's like you get someone that's right. like uh i worked at a few places where they're like yeah i was in it and then i i got out of it and each time i'd be like you lucky person you <laughs> be like please tell me how did you escape uh also jordy thank you for the reminder about the clown horn i can turn that off for the next one was it uh sufficient? i do enjoy this sorry no what go was ahead. that uh you were gonna say uh i don't know well now it's like i don't remember how many times i've hit the the toggle button for that so i guess we'll see in an hour and a half whether or not i actually turned because it doesn't have any vi visual cue as to whether or not the sound is on or off so who knows? Yeah. Well, Did I press it an even or an odd number of times? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I'm imagining like the, the most uh, cartoonishly clown horn sound effect possible. That's exactly it. It literally is just like honk honk, like <laughs> at the end of like every like break. Uh, yeah. Uh... At the end of every break period. Honestly, like I love this timer and I do appreciate having like a sound to notify me, especially when I'm like really like head down in what I'm working on. But that clown horn, though. <laughs> uh, you need to have something that, that gets your mind thinking about something else. Otherwise, like, yeah, th this is my big goal for for like the things that I want to work on outside of like last week's topic. But as far as like uh, working on things, my big goal is scoping. <laughs> to, it's what? To scoping, to know how much time I, I have scoped out for a project. Ah, okay. Um, because it's like, uh, so I shared that comic with, you. do you mind if I give a little bit of like, uh, a little bit of a story about the comic and all this kind of stuff? Oh no, go ahead. So I worked on this comic for Endless War. I'll I'll put it in your chat and show it on, on my side as well. Mm -hmm. Um so it was really um uh, I'll let you guess here too. Do you wanna guess how many hours I spent on this on this project here? I'll paste it over there for everyone to see on your side. And then... thirty seven hours. Okay, um, that is a little bit under, but... No. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess I'm not surprised, because it is really, like, click on that comic and check it out, like, if anybody hasn't seen it, because it is so detailed. It's a very, like, Where's Waldo, like, kind of situation, or Where's Wally, if you're from the UK, um... Uh, but yeah, there's just a lot of details going on in there. So how long? Cause I was initially like, what about like 43 or something? But I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, did it really break the 40 hour mark? But yeah, it surpassed 40 hours. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just showing it on my side and then I'll, I'll send you a Google, uh, sheet link where I, I have all the hours tallied. Um, ah. so that's where I can definitively say how long it took. And so it's a little tricky too, because, uh, so I did all the drawing, and then what I did as the final entry in this video series was I went, I was like, all right, let me do this kind of auditing analysis of how long this took. So that way I can say, if you want something like this, it will cost X amount versus here are all the VODs that prove how much time I put into this. And so then the total amount, and I'll paste this in to everyone's chat, um, and when that loads, I'll give the review of the number, um, was with with no distraction. So like if I was just telling someone, this is your, your legal minimum to pay me, would be 51 yeah. hours of non-distracted time. Um, so in total about 
four hundred dollars paid at minimum wage, <laughs> the federal minimum yeah. wage, and just like. Uh... Well, I was gonna say that is not minimum wage work either. That is, uh, yeah. If you're not charging at least, I mean, I've seen people now talking about that the real minimum wage should be like twenty five dollars an hour instead of fifteen. Because when we started talking about fight for fifteen, fifteen dollars was a lot different then than it is now. You know, and so yeah, if you price that at like twenty bucks an hour or something. Yeah, the way I kind of I calculated that out actually, I have that as listed as mm -hmm. leisure time wages, which is um, however much you get paid for labor. So let's say minimum wage, double yeah. that, and that's like how much you would be paid for leisurely activities. So in Washington yeah. State, if I were paid a minimum wage in Washington State, then leisurely I'd be paid sixteen hundred dollars for that, and it's like over yeah. the course of fourteen days, I worked about. 16% uh, of all of that time or about 25% of my awake time um, mm -hmm. spent thinking about it was 37%. So that was quite an undertaking. Um, but I, yeah. I present that as a sort of like that I needed to do to work through some very deep, emotionally challenging things in my life that we've talked about last mm -hmm. week and then uh, elsewhere. So uh, yeah. that comic was very necessary for me with that emotional growth. However, I would say that uh, uh, I don't have that in me to spend. If you consider thinking time about like planning, logistics, communication, mm -hmm. it was like 80 hours. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like there's all this other time that goes into this stuff. But, Excuse me, that doesn't get accounted for. But it's like, I still want to do art. And that was, uh, I won, I was one of the contest winners. And mm -hmm. I had, I'd mentioned this to you in the pre-show, Bella, but uh, one of the judges who is a professional artist that is paid in part to do art, but also other things as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What he did was later on after the contest, he took a screenshot of one bit that he really liked, the, uh, the posters down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he zoomed in on the posters because that was actually from a, a very esoteric thing that I, I called to. He saw and he was like, I like this detail. I was just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel like gratified. Yeah. So Wow, I'm... this is so organized. <laughs> I think I spent like, what was it? Uh, two hours doing the whole analysis side of things. Um, mm -hmm. So when I did all of that, I was like, all right, cool. Let me, let me kind of, I did all the math. I did all the formulas. Um, mm -hmm. The, yeah, the intro video is two minutes long, but the outro was two hours and 15 minutes long. So. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm looking at this now. So what, what was the, uh, cause I noticed I, you know, and forgive me, but mm. I always look at, when I look at a column, I look for the like, you know, extreme values, you know, or any kind of differences or discrepancies. So what, uh, what did you spend, uh, 80% of three and a half hours, uh, with VOD number 21 on uh... like 20, only 20% 20 on topic. Yeah, yeah. So for for 19 and 21, what I did was I used, um, so with 19, I was talking about medical stuff. And what mm -hmm. I did was I said, I just went to a healthcare appointment. So I want to talk through this. I want to figure this out. So I'm going to use this mm -hmm. space to talk about that. And so I kind of was just like, you know, it's not 100% like me grinding away at the picture while maybe talking about whatever. This is like mm -hmm. looking at other material and talking about that. Um, and so that's where I would say that that was the, the variance bit that you're asking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was about, um, it was about 80% on topic for that. And then for 21, I did what I call writing talks, right? I talk about mm -hmm. in that one, it was exposition. And so I said, um, if you don't know anything about Endless War, um, this is very much you need exposition to, to figure out what the heck is going on here. Yeah, because I have no <laughs> clue what's going on in there. Like, I look at it and I appreciate the art and I can tell that whatever is going on there is well depicted, but I have no <laughs> clue. So I'll give you a quick run.
down here. Um, so okay. this is a four panel comic. In panel one, my buddy Soul is saying, hey, I have a scheme. If I gift you 200 bricks, then I can win this contest that was running in parallel to like the whole, this whole event is like a, a riff on Saturnalia, um, mm -hmm. which was a Roman uh, holiday. And right. so then uh, what he did was he gifted me 200 bricks, which is shown in all the screenshots with the numbers um, mm -hmm. of <laughs> basically spamming all of that. Um, so when he did that, I depicted a lot of other characters, player characters doing other things. And this is in that wide panel shot number two, uh, panel two. Mm -hmm. And so then we go to panel three where we're looking and we're seeing that Soul has won the most festive, uh, which uh, also includes all these little uh, figurines. That's all part of uh, what, what we call it as Slimernalia, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> which the person who saw that was very amused. He was like, I can't believe there's so many of me in there. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, and I'll compliment you on your art about this. Is I like how many little details that you do put in. Like, I like stuff that's like busy where like you can always kind of dart your eyes around and be like, oh, there's something, there's something, there's something, you know, and all these little details that you notice. Yeah, like I made the background geographically accurate, which is something that <laughs> uh, <laughs> is like originally I was just kind of screwing around and I was like, hey, wait a second, I have to make this accurate. So I redid it all. I reached out to to um, in Endless War. There is a a person that runs the Endless War Minecraft server, and uh -huh. so I was like, "Hey, uh, the person's name is Marin Pan." I was like, "Hey, Marin Pan, uh, can you help me with like making this geographically accurate?" <laughs> so I had like fifteen people in on this, helping me, consulting with me about it. <laughs> I was like, "Uh." This turned out to be a really big thing, but a lot of people liked it. And so it was very much... And then panel four is, of course, my my style just amplified to 11. Um, <laughs> so then it's like, you know, you get the kudos, you get the good rewards, you get all of that. And it's like, wait, is, I spent like 50, 51 at least hours on this thing. Um, maybe I should learn to like as the goal of wanting to do more art participate in more contests maybe i should tone that back a lot <laughs> right but you don't know until you're in it and realize oh i spent i spent like two labor weeks on this um yeah and like you just spend more and more and more time and i even stuff i even was like I, I got to a point where I was like, what if I add this? What if I add that? And I'm like, wait, I'm not going to get it done. <laughs> yeah. So my goal was... Sorry, the... I just got slightly distracted because I was looking for a link. Um, Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'll, if you need to focus on that, then... Uh... No, 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 no. Sorry. It was just because my brain went off on a bunny trail and I wanted to find <laughs> something to link. Uh, But I promise I was listening. Hey, no worries. Even if you weren't... um. So through all of this, um, we have another contest coming up here uh, that started mm -hmm. the day of. The, like they, they do like, here's a contest. It's about Slimernalia. Then next will be about relics. And so I was like, I have an idea already cooked up. But when I'm working with my buddy Soul, it's like, okay, mm -hmm. let's make sure I don't spend 50 plus hours on this. <laughs> well, right. It's like you have to be like, okay. I want to do, it's like, I have this idea that I want to do, but like, realistically, can I do that for this project that I need to work on within the constraints, you know, that I have for that? Like, is this like a passion project type thing that I actually need to wait until I have like 75 hours to devote to it? Or, you know, should I find kind of an alternate version that I can work on? for this, you know, contest or whatever, that's only going to make me take, you know, take maybe like 25 instead. Yeah. And that's where like on my side, Sinley says getting it done faster can come with practice of like doing iterations mm -hmm. on that. Um, 
so I think the main thing is I'm scoping it down a lot more. So it's going to be a simplistic version of this. Um, the way I calculated it out was that that panel four, that city escape, probably took 20 plus hours on its own. <laughs> And it was right. Just... I mean, but there's so much detail and, you know, going and making it geographically accurate. Yeah, it was, uh, but it was really rewarding in part. It was like my big return to endless war, bringing in a, mm -hmm. a contest entry that everyone's just like, what the hell is going on here? What What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is like fun, you know, to, to have people respond so well to your work and like, you know, we were saying earlier that it's like, you know, you don't necessarily need people's like approval or like, you know, uh, whatever to make this stuff worthwhile. But like it is encouraging. Yeah, definitely. So the internal validation of me completing this and really doing a good job for everyone. Um, and then like through the artistic process, like Sinley is saying was saying, um, by me learning the artistic process and figuring out that I can use my art and recording to talk through really deep topics mm -hmm. will be immensely helpful. Um, the final helpful step will be for me to realize, yeah, if I can reduce that hour of labor down, um, <laughs> then to tie it back in with the miscommunication, um, mm -hmm. were I not to have done all this diligent recording, then... I could have implied that, hey, I got this done in like 10 hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. But it's like, no, you most certainly did not. <laughs> yeah. So then you wanted to mention Yule 2021. Yeah. Just because like I was thinking about, I could have sworn that and maybe last year they did like an extra like Saturnalia, like mini collection or something. Um but uh, if anybody's not familiar with Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, um, they make a lot of uh, primarily perfumes that have really interesting, like, complicated scents. Some of them are, like, interesting single notes if you're a person who likes to layer different perfumes. Um, but a lot of them are all really creatively blended and named, and they often have, like, a lot of, um, you know, symbolism and, like, story behind them or, like, you know organized around like a holiday um oh i remember what it was it wasn't saturnalia it was um the they do i want to say it's the loop lupercalia collection um maybe that was what it jostled although i mean i'm happy to share the yule one as well but uh let me see here I was going to make but a yeah, little joke you... that you were probably thinking of Slimer and Alien, you're in Endless War. <laughs> huh. I mean, you do make it sound like a lot of fun. It is a very, I will, I will say this, it is a very chaotic environment. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of chaotic art. Um, I personally think it's kind of like, it's like a, a, a dressed up 4chan that then like toned sure. out a lot of the, the, the bigotry um it kind of started off as like we make jokes edgy jokes and then it's like well now we have a really big audience maybe we should not do that <laughs> right yeah uh it it was it was like uh uh the artist shadok um who's really popular on youtube uh, mm -hmm. was a big endless war player for a long enough period of time where shadok then made like this whole video about endless war i was just like that brought in a whole bunch of new people and now it's like oh now we're commercial <laughs> oh you sold out <laughs> uh but it was like it, it's cool to see stuff like that it's like oh our, our little community has grown exponentially now <laughs> yeah like it's cool you know and hopefully you know because i'm sure that there were people who came looked around like and eh, this isn't really my thing and like left you know, but hopefully there have been some like cool people that have stayed, you know, to enrich the space. Yeah, we have a little bit of a hazing trick um, for mm -hmm. for new new people when we have the uh, the welcome message enabled. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like you everyone's like, hey, hey, get your starter slime by doing exclamation mark harvest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it's like, um, 
so I have a command on my side that has harvest, uh, and then it's like the command says harvest is not a command, and then like there's you know it's a little bit kind of like everyone just points and laughs at the person and says aha you you fell for it. <laughs> so that's the whole thing it's just that like that's not like a command available in the game and then like you try to get people to like type it yeah and then it, it's kind of like a little hazing of like if if someone is not um acceptable of of having a little bit of a gaff and or goof as as i yeah. mentioned yesterday the gaff and goof um, and goof yeah <laughs> then they're just going to have a bad time. The person's just not going to have fun because if if you take it really seriously, then it's going to be like, ah, you you hazed me. I can't I can't deal with this. It's like right. All right, you know. Yeah, I mean, which you know, if that's not their thing, then that's fine. Then they can encounter that and be like, you know, what, this isn't for me and then leave. Yeah. You know, but like, you know, it'd be a problem if they were like, "Well, I can't believe that you would treat me like that." And like, I think that this is unacceptable. <laughs> it's you like <laughs> then it, we do have situations where there have been words that we've said like hey um i know this is on the github and i know that this is part of the game but maybe we should edit that out now and it's like okay yeah let's do that <laughs> yeah right and that's you know that is a good thing about you know these things living and changing and growing is you know that you can keep what you love and then refine it and, you know, make it, you know, more, I guess, acceptable or, or not acceptable, but accessible isn't quite the right word either. Um, I guess so, sort of accessible, but making more people feel, I guess, like included and enthused about playing the game versus put off. Yeah, and that's kind of like what I what I try to do with the comic is show like, this is what the game is like, but it's an imagination version. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have, it's all text, but this is like the imagined version. So if this looks cool to you and you're interested in this, uh, you can dig in deeper and figure it out. Otherwise, I, I don't make it easy for people to find because then you invariably have people are like, oh, I'm curious. Um, let me click on here. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a very like opt in culture. Yeah, it's like with float tanks. When I when I first mm -hmm. got into them, it was like uh, the float place I go to. They had a sandwich board of all things that was their mm -hmm. advertising, and they're like float place opening soon. I was like, what is this? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, I can get into this. So yeah, that little bit of research goes a long way. <laughs> And that is a goal for me for 2022 is uh, is trying out floating. I really enjoy it, and I can't wait until I can. I'm gonna go to rehab, uh, occupational therapy, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna get them to help me out because I imagine floating will help a lot. But get, yeah, getting in and out. Uh, right. <sighs> Well, yeah, I was because I know we talked about this before about the like different facilities available. And I do remember I saw one semi recently that was almost like a, a sort of like a, a cabin that you went into that had like a sloped floor where you could kind of walk into the, um, you know, the the water, I guess you would say. I mean, it is mm. basically just water with a lot of Epsom salt like mm -hmm. dissolved into it isn't it mm -hmm. so um but you know just being able to like gradually enter like that rather than having to clamber in and out of you know uh, a space pod <laughs> it they kind of are space pods but it, they do it endearingly <laughs> yeah but it's like you know the difference between having a um you know a walk-in tub versus a step-in tub you know or walk-in shower versus a step-in you know um, just again, uh, something where you can make it more accessible for more people. Yeah. And what I really enjoy about, um, what I really enjoy about, um, the place I go to is that they have one, uh, they have like four rooms and one of them has a, a shower chair. Um, so okay. they have accessibility in mind. 
Um, so when I go there, I'd be like, hey, I, I probably would need to uh, uh, <laughs> use that. Um, I'm not going to go until I like like I'm more mobile and able to move around, Yeah. but uh, Yeah. it <laughs> I'm definitely going to go in crutches. <laughs> Right. But like they should still be able to accommodate you, you know, I mean, especially since it's a wellness, you know, therapy, I'm sure that, you know, they should have ways to, uh, yeah, be able to accommodate you to help you heal. Yeah, and and I kind of have the good bias as well, where I know I know one of the co-owners of this place, Mm. Mm. um, so it's like I I was one of the first one hundred people in that location to float, so they did like a free float for like getting people in, and that was with the old owner, and now the new one of the new co-owners I know, uh, I think we're even friends on Facebook too, uh, Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like. Um, that is something that, that, uh, when I get back in, it'll probably be like, Hey, it's been a long time. It's like, yeah, yeah, it has been It's like, it's been a, a rough couple of years. Yeah, it was, uh, I believe it was right before my surgery in August of 2020. And now it is, uh, uh, the 11th of January, 2022. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's a goal for me, too, to get back into floating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think just, you know, I think it's one of those things. It's like you can have like a nebulous goal, like I want to practice more self-care. Mm -hmm. And it's like, OK, what does that actually mean, though? What actual actions are you going to take to fulfill that outcome, you know, or that fall under that umbrella that count towards practicing that thing? Mm hmm. And so, you know, floating could be one. Uh, doing your laundry more regularly is self-care. You know, making sure that you have good food to eat is self-care. Going to bed at a responsible time. You know, um, whatever other unique circumstances that you, you know, you particularly have, you know. Um, yeah, it's just like finding actionable things. Napping more often is good, too. Yeah, absolutely. If you're a person who, you know, does better with more naps, then nap away. <laughs> nap core. <laughs> and the nap life. Yeah, nap life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as a uh, as a person with narcolepsy, naps are weird for me because what ends up being a nap to me is like going to sleep for like three to five hours. Mm. So basically like a half of a regular night's sleep. Like, or it just ends up being that when I am, like, so tired that I need to take a nap, like, I'm, like, asleep, you know, for a while. But, you know, there is definitely value in, like, laying down and just, you know, kind of closing your eyes and being still for, like, 30 minutes, you know. Um, even if you're a person who can't take, like, regular naps, I guess. Yeah, I'll do that too. Like if I'm, I usually do like a mid day nap or I used to when I needed, um, when I wasn't on a medication, I was helping out. Um, mm -hmm. so frequently be like, I have to schedule my day after like a podcast or after a recording nap, wake up and then, you know, do something else. But now it's like, huh, my, my naps are kind of more like maybe 50-50 sleeping or just letting my spine rest in a different position. Mm -hmm. Right. Kind of nice. Right, yeah. I mean, it is important to shift, you know, to shift your shift your body around, um, you know, if you can and give it, you know, a variety of uh, things to do. Yeah, it just, it gets really rough. And that's why I'm really happy that I'm going to occupational therapy and not physical mm -hmm. therapy because yeah, uh, <laughs> last year in 2021, I went to uh, a physical therapy office. Uh, this is like a multi-state, multi-chain business. Um, yeah. I believe that they do great with, you know, helping sports ball people with minor injuries like yeah. a six week plan but <laughs> for me uh right. not quite <laughs> no an occupational therapy is really more what you need to like be able to adapt like your you know daily activities you know and being able to find like success strategies long term for that versus 
oh, I, you know, tore, you know, my ACL or whatever. Uh, and I need help rehabbing that. Yeah, yeah, and that's where I would imagine that with the minor sports ball injuries, like first of all, they're they're walking in or they're, you know, maybe walking with a little bit of a, a slower pace. But if I'm going in with crutches, um, I'm not really sure if physical therapy would have like. That's where I just scratch my head and I think, what the hell were some of these doctors thinking? <laughs> Like, send Yeah, me off to physical I mean, therapy instead of occupational therapy last year. What was going on? right, yeah. And then, you know, you're, like, trying to be a good patient and going through it and whatever. And then when it's like, oh, well, I'm not sure why that didn't help. And you're like, well, I don't know, maybe because you told me to do the wrong thing. Yeah. Uh, many horror stories. Many horror stories, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, one of my goals for like healthcare stuff is to actively be my own advocate, uh, which is one part of it. And then for two, share my knowledge that I'm learning so that others may be their own advocates and really take it, take their, like if, if you go in for like uh, something simple, um, then yeah, you don't need to study all of this stuff, but as soon as your case is any mild, has any mild complexity, um, even the most, uh, empathetic doctor, even the most caring doctor, um, still won't know as much as you do. If you know it, you say like, for me, like I have a spine, I have spine issues from my L5 down. That is Yeah. very clear information for doctors. But if I tell that to someone that doesn't know anything about spines is like, what's an L5? Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Jordy is right that the doctors weren't thinking really uh, <laughs> that a lot of people generally are on autopilot, especially now. yeah. And like, especially with like the way that the medical system works, like doctors, you know, end up kind of just doing the same kind of routine menu options for everybody because they're expected to kind of routinize care and you know everything has to be able to be neatly entered into a computer and you know conform to these standards of care and to this standard and that standard and whatever and so then it just ends up being everybody gets the same treatment regardless of whether that's what they actually need in their personal case or not. Yeah, I can, I can see where it's a lot of, they need to escalate from, you know, you try this, you try that, you try the other thing. Um, it's just something that whenever I hear a doctor say, we don't know much about this, we don't know much about that. It's like, Mm -hmm. Yeah. the, the thing is, is that that doctor is speaking from a royal we perspective. Right, You... we who? <laughs> you Yeah. as the doctor that is saying these words do not know this that doesn't mean Mm hmm like I had a doctor tell me a few years ago we don't know much about why people have headaches and then I was like a few Yeah. years later like there's a whole industry of doctors that specialize in neurology including headaches <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, go to Google Scholar and like, you know, fucking type in headaches or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, it's like that whole thing of like, people are like, well, I don't know why people aren't talking about, you know, this like social issue. And it's like, people are and people have been, it's just you haven't seen them or interacted with them. So like, you're not some fucking genius that just like uniquely like came up with this idea. And it's like, If they were more specific about like, well, we have some idea about how headaches work, but, you know, the research is always, you know, evolving or et cetera, et cetera. It's like, yeah, that's true. Like sleep, like we've studied sleep a lot. There are sleep doctors and journals about sleep and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But we still have a lot to learn about sleep and its function in the human body and, you know, all of that stuff. So it's like, you know, be again, be specific with your wording and what you mean. Oof, I'm, yeah, exactly. And I'm reading what Sinley wrote here. I'll read it out. Um, and even specialists specialize in multiple different things to the point they may not remember or know enough about 
this one thing in their specialization too. Uh, Sinley may have had one of these uh, doctors give give her misinformation that mm -hmm. if she had followed would have landed her in the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Horror stories abound. <laughs> Right. Or like, um, I see people talking about, um, oh, let me just Google this really quickly to make sure that I'm talking about the right thing. Um, and I should say that when I laugh, I don't mean to like downplay or be rude. Um, I use, I use the laughter as kind of like a, a relief because I can empathize so deeply with this, um, that yeah it's like i have my own similar horror story where i did end up having to get specialized treatment and just like who we uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and, and sinley says i get it so thank you sinley I, I i mean with respect i just sometimes your mind just is like hey zombie paper remember this you're gonna think about this until you <laughs> like stop it <laughs> Yeah, so what I was looking at is um, uh, about, um, are you familiar with, uh, oh, let me see, it's mast, mast cell activation syndrome. Mast cell activation syndrome. I am not. Yeah, so it's basically about like, I, I can't even explain like mast cells and inflammation and histamine and all of that that well, but... I've seen a lot of people like in chronic, chronic illness communities talking about having this mast cell activation syndrome, which many people who have it uh, experience exercise intolerance. Mm. Um, so exercise actually makes their symptoms worse and makes them physically worse, uh, but still get recommended by all of their doctors, you know, oh, well, you should work out, you know, it'll make you feel better. It'll give you more energy. It'll... And it's like, do you not understand? You know? Oh, Jordy, that's terrible. Oh, uh, yeah, that's where... Like, what decade is this? What century? I mean, honestly. Oh, <clears throat> uh, what's an NP? I'm sorry? A nurse practitioner. Ah, nurse there you practitioner. go. Nurse practitioner, yeah. Yeah, when I, when I had the occupational therapy referral, that was after me telling the, the doctor, my new PCP, um, I told, I told the PCP, Hey, so if I go to PT, this is what's going to happen. And I was like, I went to this spot last year and this is what they did. And, and the doctor's like, yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, next thing, occupational therapy. It's like, yeah, it's like it's sometimes like how insurance companies force doctors to make you try. You probably had to do this where they force you to make you try one drug or one formulation of a drug, even if you've already tried it or even if your doctor and you know it won't work. You, they still force you to do that before they'll let you have the stuff that you actually need or that actually works because of, you know, this policy or that policy. I had a my most recent pain clinic. They were they were duping the system by doing that. Um, so they were they were doing like yeah we got to do two SIJ injections to to prove that medically we can do an ablation. And I was talking to a second opinion doctor over uh, Teladoc, not sponsored, and the doctor was saying, yeah you know a lot of pain clinics they do this they do this to get money. And I was like mm. oh. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. So then you're like, okay, well, great. You know, like, I mean, that's the way with the American healthcare system, though, is it's like, how much do these people actually care about health versus how much do they just care about getting as much money as possible out of both me and my insurance company? Yeah, yeah. The, the worst of it, this is something I asked advocate for with every every patient in the American healthcare system. Uh, this is the big horror story that I have. Uh, when I was going in for the, the surgery, the, the mm -hmm. surgeon told me, he said, don't talk to the insurance company at all. Let me do all the talking. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, okay, I, I trust you. Right. What like, a, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> what a fucking mistake I did there. 
So that's a horror story that, you know, like if that's that's the reddest of flags in the entire universe of healthcare. If if you have a doctor telling you, do not go talk to your insurance company. If there's yeah. anything I can advocate for, uh, say, OK, now it's time to do a 360 backflip out of this patient room and <laughs> go see someone else. Yeah, right. Because it's like any time that somebody tries to be like, I'm the only source of information that you need. You don't need to cross check with these other people that we're talking to. I will handle it all. No. Bad idea. Yeah. Because what are they hiding <laughs> if you go and talk to that person or that group and right. that, that person or group agree, then we can all be on the same page. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh they were like yeah like the doctor was like yeah you got to get the surgery because these slip discs they're gonna they're gonna cause you paralysis and it's like mm -hmm. i was talking to an insurance rep that was saying yeah i have i have slip discs from when i was dancing and i'm not sure if i want to get surgery and i was like uh my sur surgery experience is not positive so make sure to <laughs> do your research <laughs> yeah right uh, no, yeah, I mean, you do need to do your research. Yeah, and Jordy is sharing about, about uh, gyno experiences here. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, man, like, ugh. It's such a complicated topic, um, trying to seek out good, like, gynecological care. Uh, and I mean, I'll say for myself, especially, like, as a trans person um you know it's it's still it's still really difficult and i think that's one of those things really that's like almost as difficult as a therapist because it's a very obviously very sensitive subject and a very sensitive topic and um you know if you have the wrong person it can really cause a lot of damage to you whether physically or emotionally or whatever you know um i had a provider who was a doctor not an np um who when I went to see her about getting an exam um, made me feel like I was making a bad choice by choosing one contraceptive option over the one that she continued to push on me. Um, and also when I asked about long-term or permanent sterilization options, uh, proceeded to tell me a story about how, you know, when she was younger, she didn't think that she would want children, but, you know, that now she got older and got married and so on and so forth. And, you know, basically just, oh, well, you never know kind of thing. And I was like, this is like one of the most unhelpful attitudes for like, uh, you know, for, for a gynecological provider to have. That's, that's like my, when I hear stuff like that, that's like, all right, thank you for your time. It's equivalent to like uh, job interviewing um, mm -hmm. where you go in it, like a lot of people. And, and like, this is with all due respect, um, but I feel like a lot of people all due respect, but <laughs> sorry about yeah. that. Um, so people go into job interviews desperate for any job. And so people will take the lowest offer. People will get screwed over People won't ask good questions of like, uh, hey, I, I have ADHD. Will this job be OK with me? Will this job help me with this disability of mine kind of a thing versus hiding that or hiding? Yeah, like I'm, I'm working through my sobriety. I'm doing pretty well, but I relapse on occasion and I'm doing my best, but I need the job. A lot of people hide yeah. that because people are terrified over not getting the job. And so mm -hmm. same like you go in, you, you interview a doctor, you go in and the mm -hmm. doctor tells you shit about like, oh, yeah, like if you get if you get all this, then what if you want children 50 or 100 years from now? It's like, what? <laughs> no. Yeah. It's like I didn't ask you to like make me rethink my decision. I asked for you to give me information on this like i don't need you to convince me about this um and also like what the fuck like isn't like a majority of your profession supposed to be about like protecting people's right to choose how and when to be pregnant if they want to do that or not 
Like, <sighs> why try to force your opinion on me? You so, know, but it's because, like, having babies makes money. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, you know, it's it's further office visits that you have to make. It's, you know, further, you know, like a million dollars towards the hospital for the delivery. It's, you know, buying all of the this, that, and the other thing for babies and, you know, whatever. And so it's 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 all money making, you know? Yeah, and it'd be one thing, too, if our society as a whole were uh, needing people if we if we were desperately like hey we are underpopulated um mm -hmm. and we are struggling but um it is quite the opposite so it is actually fairly uh and this is where i i must admit some degree of um lack of education so just putting that out there but from what i understand mm -hmm. um if there are children that are being born that are unwanted then that mm -hmm. creates a burden on society different than if we were to say, hey, let's figure this all out and let's make this more efficient. Because I, I imagine there are some families out there, some you know couples that want to have children that really don't even give a shit about what child uh, is, is being raised. Um, <laughs> and that would be very helpful if, if more parents were like, hey, um, what if we adopt? Yeah, it's it's really complicated, like adoption, especially in the United States and like foster home situations and all of this. I mean, the thing is to solve all of this is that, you know, we need to, you know, simply abolish the patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, it's, you know, giving people with uteruses more agency and also doing things like uh raising you know the minimum wage and providing more benefits and doing things like that because when people have more stability and security and they're able to make more um informed and empowered decisions about their reproductive choices you know um things are different you know when you make things easily you know available for people and make it possible for them to make decisions that would make their life you know better um, like one of the things that I think a lot about is, um, it was, uh, Colorado that introduced, um, a program to offer free, uh, intrauterine devices as contraception to teenagers. And, uh, apparently it was pretty well adopted and it decreased the teenage pregnancy rates in the state quite significantly. I was a little and so that benefits everybody to, to hen and I, I, I uh, sorry I, I'll be honest I missed I missed what you said there <laughs> that's fine no worries basically just that like the state of Colorado providing like free long-term low effort um, birth control um, to uh, teenagers with uteruses let's say mm -hmm. um, you know ended up being a very successful tactic to reduce unwanted pregnancies and so you know um i don't know i mean it's a, it's all a very you know complicated topic with a lot of personal choice involved um but you know it's i don't know like i feel bad kind of for everybody all the way around i feel like a lot of parents especially in the united states don't get the financial and social support that they need um, I think that children don't get a lot of what they need. Uh, I get really upset about how, because the thing is, it's like the issue isn't particularly population. It's the usage and allotment of the resources that we have that's uneven. Like we have more than enough land and food and money and you know all of that for people but it's just extremely extremely unequally distributed now you yeah. know um and and that's part of the problem you know that's a huge part of the problem you know um you know and then what do you do like i i don't know what i would do if i were a person who wanted to have children in in these days you know in these troubling and uncertain times you know, it's got to be really difficult to have that 
biological, emotional, you know, urge, this need, like, you know, that some people have apparently and not feel like you could fulfill that without almost, you know, to be frank, damning your child to a very difficult adulthood and a very difficult life. Yeah, and like Henny is saying about uh, if we let people be safe and fed, then why would they rise and grind? And that's yeah, a, no, absolutely. That's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, if you did that, eventually people would just get bored of just hanging around doing nothing. And then eventually you figure out like, hey, what if I do something that helps my local area? I, I'm bored in my apartment. I've done enough here. What if I go out and clean my my local area is mm -hmm. is something that a lot of people don't really think um but then it's like this is the kind of nuance of debate or everyone could be like well what about this what about that and it's like the whole point is like the larger goal that we're kind of like wanting is what if we just aren't so fucked <laughs> Right. Have we considered not being so fucked up, maybe? Um, also, I just have to say, as a real deal legal homeowner who pays property taxes and has to worry about property value and all that stuff, I don't give a shit about the property value of my house. I do not care. And I don't understand why people care so damn much. You know, because then everything comes down to, oh, my property values, oh, my, uh, you know, whatever. Like, and I'm like, I don't, why are you so obsessed with, like, the financial kind of sparkliness of your house, like, that much that you hate the idea of, like, people being housed, you know, or, I don't know, it's the whole thing of, like, why is your first instinct as a person who sees people you know who are unhoused or who are insufficiently housed or who are publicly dealing with addiction how is your first reaction to get angry at that person yeah yeah exactly you it's, know it's i like... think a lot of people's impressions are that like these programs and assistance are more available than they actually are but like you know living in the neighborhood that i do and like having the neighbors that i do and helping out specifically one set of neighbors with a lot of this stuff it's like people don't understand how difficult it is to access any kind of help you know with the extremely broken you know barely patched social safety net that we have as a nation and you know as individual local areas yeah it's all about raising the funny numbers in your bank account mm -hmm. and it's like when i when i lived in my last residence it was like i was I was, uh, we'll say renting. I won't get into the yeah. details, but we'll say renting this house. And sure. the house was kind of run down a little bit, kind of old. Um, and then my neighbor across the street and over one had, had bought a, a just junker house and was re renovating it. Um, he was a uh, ho home inspector, so he could get away with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was one of these like, so we both our our homes were both ones that were like junker homes in a nice neighborhood so it was kind of nice in that regard but uh sure i'm sure all the neighbors were like what the fuck is going on here you're you're lowering my property value and it's like oh my property values yeah yeah my, my, my property value and it's like my property values yeah you know if you were that worried about it you would do the thing that neighbors used to do before we decided to hole up and to become uh, antagonistic against everyone was to be like, hey, so my neighbors are decreasing my home property value. What if I go help my neighbors? <laughs> what if I go over and say like, hey, um, do you need a hand with stuff? Do you need like maybe it's like if if the sign looks all messed up. And it's like, yeah. hey, I know someone that can help with the siding. Do you yeah, need this like, information? If their grass is overgrown, like, you know, instead of calling code enforcement. Uh, it just, you know, uh, the, what, is, what is it for the, um, there's the three letter acronym for the, uh, 
um, like home. Uh, it's like HOA. HOAs. Fucking yeah. HOAs. Yeah. It's like no, and that's why we bought the house that we did because I was like, I don't need any anybody being in my fucking business. Basically, I'm like, if I am going to own my own home, like. No, I am not letting somebody else tell me what to do, what I can personally do with my own home. Like, you are not going to come onto my property and start, you know, saying some shit about the my, you know, front lawn is A, not perfect grass, and is B, you know, two inches too long, you know? Um, I mean, honestly, one of the very realistic things that I thought about a lot when we were buying houses was, am I likely to get either fussed at by my neighbors or more realistically have like the cops called or like a really passive aggressive note placed for wanting to sit out back in my own backyard and smoke my cannabis, which I legally purchased as a medical patient of this state, you know, but a lot of people won't mind their fucking business. And they'll be like, Oh, I can't believe this is drug users in my neighborhood. And they're going to contribute to the moral delinquency of my children. <laughs> While you know? they're actively doing it themselves. <laughs> right, I was going to say, you think that your fucking Brayden and Taylee aren't sitting upstairs in their bedrooms ripping on their, like, vape pens? Come on. <laughs> like. If you want to think of the children, well, think of the children. Start think with of yours. your own children. <laughs> yeah, like, I am not, like, responsible for their moral corruption or whatever. You know? They're probably doing drugs, but, you know, you make them feel unsafe enough that they don't want to talk to you about it. So how about you work on that uh, and leave me alone? And welcome in, uh, K-Fibers, with the party of three. Oh, hey, KB-Fibers. Or KB, hello, sorry. Hello. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, Jordy, you do keep tripping the, uh, the auto mod. <laughs> uh, auto mod is a... It's a great and evil thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous, Jordy. About uh, Jordy said before marriage, um, their apartment building had an HOA thing that was all you can't have curtains in any other color than white or off white. And Jordy was kind of all, "Lol, you only see these if you literally walk past my kitchen window. It's hidden by trees. Go fuck yourself." <laughs> um, which, yeah, that's pretty much my sentiment on HOAs exactly. Um. Uh, yeah, all of this. Yeah, well, Henny, also, that's just renting in general, isn't it? Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Sorry. Yeah, saying a lot of swear words right off the jump. There is an 18 plus disclaimer in my stream title for a reason. Um, we like to we like to craft here, but we also like to swear. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and hi, Caramel Honey. Uh, nice to see you. Um, KB, I hope you had a good stream. Uh, we are talking about goals today, and uh, uh, how did you put it, Zombie Paper? What's the title on your side? Uh, my title, and, and hello everyone there, uh, my title is Goals, uh, with the subtitle, How to Keep Your Pound Sign Goals from Becoming Your Pound Sign Trolls. Mm -hmm. And I was very amused. So oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was I was going to say, I'm very amused by the idea of, uh, of all of that. <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. Like, as I said, like Horatio giggled when I told it to him earlier. So, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty strong sign, but it, like, it's true. Like you can definitely have goals that like then do kind of end up trolling you or like dragging you down because you miscommunicated with yourself and kind of mismanaged your like expectations and your actual abilities and availabilities, you know, like sometimes we have like a really big idea for like a goal that we want to pursue, but it's just like, we don't have the time or the bandwidth to apply to that, you know, uh, at that time. And so it's like, okay, well, is there something I can do that's kind of like this or that gets me closer on the road towards being able to accomplish this goal someday, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it definitely, I, I think of it like the matter of, uh, when you find, um, like for, I was talking about some art earlier, um, if the art is something that is very, um, thanks for taking care of that, that, uh, that bot there. Um, so, Man. 
if you uh, if you think like I'm going to do a cool art or a crafting project, and then it ends up taking so much time and so much labor that you just end up saying, uh, I have to sell this for like fifty million dollars in order to break even. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and like stuff like that, honestly, actually, that's a good thing that because this is related to some of my goals. Um, so and I talk very, I don't know, I think it's interesting that there are some people who get turned off from like supporting businesses when the business owner talks very frankly about their business. Um, I think some people like having the illusion of like buying from a shop and don't like the actual kind of reality of like talking to a business owner and stuff. But mm that's not me. And that's not the way that I run my business. So, um, you know, I was talking with my mentor last week and we talked about a lot of stuff. And one of the ideas that he had and that we talked about is, you know, you think about kind of um, cumulative value of somebody's like working relationship with you and the idea of, you know, in a crude fashion, loyalty rewards essentially, you know, like if somebody's spent, you know, or if you expect them to spend, you know, X amount of money on you, you know, over the course of your like working relationship and over the lifetime of your relationship, then it's like, well, you know, basically this person has essentially already paid for this expensive thing that I want to give them as a gift, you know, if that makes sense. And so then it's like looking at, okay, well, some of the stuff that I do, if it was like a really ornate thing like that, that I spent a really long time on, it might not be something that I would sell. It might be something that I would either like gift or that I would raffle off for charity or that I would, um, you know, raffle off in some other way. Like um, I'm probably going to be having some special pieces that I reserve for, um, excuse me, and that I reserve for being raffled off um, between all of the people who book consultations with me in a specific month, for example. So yeah, sometimes like higher value kind of stuff like that or things that you've just poured a lot of time and work into really are just kind of priceless in the sense of like not having a monetary value that is kind of easily put into that simple sort of like I'm going to price this at this very high number and then wait for somebody to buy it like it's probably going to be hanging out for a long time yeah that reminds me of when I used to do a lot of uh, buying and selling on Craigslist not sponsored mm -hmm. um, I and I just I say not sponsored after every title of, of all of that just it, it's a joke uh, for new people yeah <laughs> Um, so when I was doing like buying and selling, it was like, you know, depending on how quickly I need to sell this, like whether it's a video game or helping sell a car or whatever, it's like you price it to move or you don't price it to move. And then you sit on it, you wait, maybe reduce the price down after like three months or six months without it selling if you want to sell it for cheaper. But for you, Bella, you spend a lot of time, like, in my same capacity, where I do more of art projects, digital art projects, you do crafting projects, and you show a majority of that on your podcast. You say, this is the labor time I'm putting in. It uh, it definitely, I like that level of transparency. I, I respect and appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, because it's like, I'm not, I'm not a brand, I have no interest in creating some mythos or having some kind of a corporate image or whatever that I need to maintain, you know, so I don't think there needs to be any of that smoke and mirrors kind of hiding the true costs of things and pretending that, you know, I mean, that's part of the reason that we're in so much trouble, I think, as things are, is, you know, all of this caginess around business and not being honest about where things are coming from and going to and who's paying for it and how it's getting disposed of and so on and so forth. Um, and so I'm very honest about that because I'm like, look, I'm like, I recognize how hard you have probably, you know, worked for your money. You know, um, I want you to feel like, you know, what your money is going towards when you spend it with me and, you know, my intentions in running my business. 
I feel that I owe it to people. Yeah, and, and what that does, you're going to filter out the people, like I was saying with the game earlier, if like you filter out the people that are, are like really super offended by every little thing, um, where when you when you disclose as much as you can, I mean, outside of like, you know, disclosing social security number information or whatnot, um, by disclosing, here's how much labor time it took, here's all of this, then you can build relationships with people that legitimately want to support you. It's going to take some time, of course, but at least it would be the right people rather than just like all of the people. <laughs> well, exactly. Like, that's the thing is I look a lot at other artists that maybe do similar things to what I do on, for example, Twitter um, or Etsy. And I look at it and I'm like, I could do that. You know, and not to say that in the armchair football kind of way, but I'm like, I literally could do exactly that thing that that person is doing, making these, you know, simple items or more kind of cute items or, you know, running my Twitter in a more kind of branded way, stuff like that. But it's like, I don't want to and I'm not interested in the kind of clientele that that would end up kind of tying me to. Yeah. Like, I could do it to try to make some money, but I would not feel happy doing it. I would not feel fulfilled doing it. You know, what I do want to do is going to be a much more difficult road, but, you know, it's the one that I want to actually take, you know, because the thing is, you always have to plan for, you know, you plan for failure, but you plan for success, too. And, like, if I get successful doing something that I hate doing, I don't want to be successful anymore. I'll, like, get there and then I'll be like, this fucking sucks. Like, I don't want to be making like, you know, uh, I don't know. For me, for example, I'm not really like a big uh, kind of, um, I don't know, uh, like amigurumi person, let's say. I think that they're super cute. And I really admire people who make a lot of like amigurumi and like little plushies and little toys and stuff. But it's just not my wheelhouse. It's not something I'm particularly interested in. But... I know that I have the technical skill to be able to make that stuff well, if I wanted to. And people love buying plush baby Yodas and, you know, uh, Totoro and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But I wouldn't be happy doing it. I wouldn't feel fulfilled doing it. I wouldn't feel like creatively inspired doing it because that's not my thing. You know, not to say that it's a bad thing. It's just not my personal one. So then it's like, all right, well, who does like my personal brand of what I do? Yeah, yeah. Um, my brain was instantly like firing in, in somewhat controversial directions on this topic. So uh, uh -huh. are you interested in me broaching this? Um, uh, I am. Uh, hold on. Let me catch up with chat, though. Yeah, uh, that... Jordy, I am sorry about your cross stitch pattern. Yeah, sorry uh, about that. Did I, you hear that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Henny, it is pretty toxic, but I spend a lot of time on Twitter during the day, to be perfectly honest. Though, a lot of it is because, like, a lot of the, like, astrological community, especially that I interact with, is, like, on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, but Twitter, boy, Twitter is Twitter. But anyways, yeah, let me hear... Oh, let me hear these hot takes. Let me, I might have to like pull my headphone away in case the takes are too hot. Uh, so but... when you're talking about Ami Gurumi and yeah. you're talking about how it's almost like having, having kind of like a, your arts and crafts kind of like, I don't want to say like for me, for, for what I'm going to say, it's like morality of like, I don't want to indulge in this. Um, so I am a digital artist. Uh, I don't I don't actively go work for commissions, um, mm -hmm. but I have some eh, special uh, digital art skills. Um, I could apply these in certain pornographic senses to get a lot mm -hmm. of money. Um, right. Eh, like furry art, for example, it gets people yeah. a lot of money. But I personally, I stop it at you know it's like. I'll draw a character that maybe has like uh, bunny ears and a snout, 
like if it's part of like that character and that sort of a thing like if i'm drawing right. someone's character but uh i don't yeah. draw pornography and mm -hmm. it's it's like yeah i could i could be losing out a lot of money but uh right you could do it but it's not what you're passionate about or interested in doing and that as a final note it's something that for me personally i feel that those that do uh, indulge in those kinds of arts like hey if if you do it and you like it or you need to because fucking rent is due tomorrow and you gotta you gotta cram out some commissions mm -hmm. uh, respect to you but i i give i i don't i don't indulge i don't engage so um right and that's fine and like that's the thing is like for people out there who do want you know some kind of erotic art like there are plenty of artists who that is what they're passionate about and they love doing and so it's like, great, okay, so you, you know, you can all work together, you know, like, it's, you know, it would be ridiculous to expect, like, every musician to play every kind of music. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's the same thing, like, you know, um, why, why would you expect, you know, I'm not going to go up to my husband, like, just because he plays, like, guitar and, like, ask him to bust out some, like, you know, flamenco style like classical guitar or something you know because that's not what he plays yeah and that's something that i think of when it comes to musicians that that adjust or adapt and there's like the concept of selling out but mm -hmm. it's like what if the musician wants to sell out why does this always have to be a, a kind of a corporate choice that hey you know they they were playing underground and now they got a record contract it's like Mm -hmm. what if they're after the money <laughs> like they're allowed to be successful like you're allowed to make money off of your like art it's not illegal yeah like yeah i have an issue with people like quote unquote selling out when they're kind of like betraying their actual like ethics and morals mm -hmm. you know like it would really you know i would be aggravated if somebody was like oh fuck sony fuck warner you know whatever fuck all these labels and then like turns around and in two weeks has a deal with one of them you know um yeah. right but uh no i mean musicians absolutely deserve to get paid and paid well uh as for all kinds of artists and anybody else who provides entertainment or beauty or joy in the world if you go to a concert and you like the band either buy the merch or just go to the table and throw down five because that $5 right. is, I, I met one band, uh, the band Daikaiju, their surf rock band. Um, mm -hmm. The One of the guitarists was like, yeah, we got to fix up our van to go to the next venue. And I was yeah. like, dude, why don't you just, this is after the show. I was like, dude, why don't you just yell out and say like, Hey, uh, our, our van is busted. We need money to buy, yeah. get this all point out. And, he was like, nah, nah, uh, and I was like, no, dude, it's okay. Like, it, I, I feel that is okay, and I'm, I'm a fan, so yeah. <laughs> he was like, hey, and then like people stop over and they're like, hey, we, you know, I'll buy something. I, I'm cool with that. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, you have to let people know that you need help if you want to get help, and like generally especially in a situation like that it's like if people are invested in the work that you're doing they'd be like yeah, oh yeah absolutely like i want you to be able to go to your you know next show or whatever like yeah here's an extra like five bucks ten bucks you know whatever <laughs> on my side nigel neverland says point me to the sellout kiosk i'm ready <laughs> yeah well and that's i gotta say honestly that's also part of the things i feel like most of the people who complain about selling out are people who would never like have the opportunity to sell out even. So <laughs> yeah. I think it's a little bit of like, what is it? Bitter grapes or whatever, sour grapes. Uh, it, it's all, it's all those haters that, that don't realize that they're actually loving, but they're just loving with a different kind of passion. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say it's a fan behavior. Um, I've seen people call it. And uh, B, yeah, what is it? Like, uh, let your haters be your motivators. Yeah, I love that. You know? I'm typing it. I'm putting it in the show notes. Let your haters be your motivators. That is a, 
a brilliant quote because yeah you got to think of like for for that for that daikaiju guitarist it was like if if you liked the performance and you liked the show and you knew that this band needed two hundred dollars or whatever to fix whatever problem in that van was preventing them from knowing securely that they could drive to the next location Mm -hmm. uh sign me up i'm gonna i'm gonna pay and i I bought a lot of stuff that i even before i knew that i was like you know just here you go have some money because i appreciate your band and your music and i even helped haul some like gear for him (laughs) yeah shoot i'll help like yeah i see you guys trying like fuck yeah get get me you know get me some uh gear to haul up these stairs yeah i'll do it <laughs> they're like yeah are you a roadie it's like no no i'm not <laughs> it's like no but i'm just you know i'm enthusiastic about the work that this band does and i want to help you know and like people do generally i find want to help in whatever way they can you know i tend to find people I don't know. I tend to find people overall to be pretty helpful um, if, you know, they're invested in, I guess, the occasion, you know, that they're trying to help with. But, um, you know, which I mean, to be honest, again, you know, is a reason that like I've been trying to be more vocal about my offerings and like ways to like financially support me because it's like I could use like the financial support and I would like for my business to grow and to do well this year. And so part of that is being like, hey, these are ways that you can give me money. And these are ways that um, you can financially support me. And if you and if you personally can't, then I would appreciate your help in finding people who can, you know, retweet and share my stuff, you know, recommend me, whatever. Yeah, I, I say this knowing like as an artist with the joke mm-hmm. of I'll pay you an exposure. It's like, yeah. uh, no this is not a payment thing um yeah <laughs> at most this is the absolute um the the most generous interpretation of that where with with that art that comic i did um mm-hmm. that exposed me to a large amount of people in that community they're like oh uh this is th- this is something new this is something mm-hmm. that we didn't expect so that is exposure um but i was not paid in exposure that was the that was like the tip uh what i was paid for was uh community um you know getting into a community that likes me that's that's like the the payment that yeah (laughs) and it's like right yeah sorry go ahead oh no i was just gonna tie that back with daikaiju where it's like yeah, uh, I I pay the band in exchange for like going to see them. I buy the ticket, I buy the merch, but then mm-hmm. the tipping is like giving them the shout out, showing the the band's name on my side of the screen, and saying this is a band, this is what they do, surf rock. If you like that, go check them out. Uh, yeah, and that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, I found out about Daikaiju of all places on Moo. 4chan's mood oh okay <laughs> sure well i mean actually i'm not that surprised i guess i should i guess i should say yeah well i mean i yeah. saw i saw a promo image of them standing uh facing one way I was like that is a cool promo shot what is this band about and then years later it's like oh <laughs> yeah they're really cool this mysterious band yeah yeah so that that's an example of of advertising and self promo in a positive sense of like, Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, as far as self promo, they, they weren't on 4chan advertising themselves, but someone was like, I like this band. And it's like, Oh, I can like this band too. (laughs) Yeah. And like, it's important. I think also to talk to other people about things that you'd like, you know, which I think a lot of people are passionate to do. I mean, word of mouth is the best advertising anybody could ever get for anything. You know, um, I think most people are going to trust that as probably the biggest recommendation for something I do. 
Like if I'm if if I'm looking for any kind of new product or new service or new business or whatever, I ask my friends and family first. And nine times out of ten, I don't go any further than that. You know, unless I find all of the options that I receive like unsatisfactory, you know. I have the one caveat that um when when i've when i've asked family and friends for recommendations um mm -hmm. i've been burned a little bit by some people because those mm -hmm. recommendations uh i go with the phrase that the what is it the the enemy of my enemy is my friend mm -hmm. as they say well the friend of my friend is not my friend yeah uh, so just because two people like like um I am friends with people that are not friends with each other. And I yeah. have to accept that it's like, hey, you two can have this beef and have this experience. But in my territory, in my space, uh, do not interact with each other in that in that way. Maybe say a friendly hello and then uh, please distance yourself. Um, please and yeah. thank you. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like, look, like I like hanging out with both of you and like, I'm going to try to not put you in situations where it's going to be awkward, but like, I need you two to be adults about this. Yeah. And it's, it's funny. Last night I was looking over an endless war. There was a screenshot someone posted and it was like, I see like discords, like blocked message note. And I was like, I read it wrong. And I was talking to someone who posted that screenshot. And I was like, why are you, why are you blocked? this person you know just kind of curious and and it was like oh i i kind of did like a, a recapture of the screenshot it was someone else i was like yeah you're right you're you're not that person <laughs> mm -hmm. right it, it it's something that it just what is it it's like oil and water they're both necessary but mix them up and you're gonna have a bad time <laughs> Right. Yeah. They're just not going to mix long term or like you might be able to get them to mix like temporarily, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, so I guess I'm getting to the last couple of minutes here of this work session. So I guess, so goals, I guess in general, yeah. do you want to do kind of like a, I know we've talked so far about like our goals 2022 um but do you want to like just go over them again i guess in sort of a concise like list or kind of a like well these are my goals it's you know a b and c or x y and z yeah as concise as i zombie paper can ever be um i will yeah <laughs> uh so... zombie paper mercury and cancer uh yeah oh good old good old zombie paper uh, five minutes is really short for a video. <laughs> uh, kind of a kind of a situation. So yes, yeah. um, already kind of off topic, but on topic. I have a list going of things that I need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so get my healthcare si situated. That is the primary goal. Yeah. Um, then later on in the year, move somewhere cheaper, mm -hmm. and then um, finish up some projects. And then the biggest goal, uh, besides learning about psychology and my own psychological deficits, is learning um, to scope myself in a way where when I work on projects that I know not to spend 50 plus hours on something unless that 50 hours is going to propel me in a certain direction that throw all the time, all the money at it, do it to get it right because this is going to launch you. Um, but if it's just like a 50-hour shitpost kind of a thing, maybe not. <laughs> right. Maybe you could have lowered it to like a 10 or 20-hour one. So those are my, my short-term goals. And that, that I feel is, a, is reasonable. It's, it's reasonable enough. So how yeah. about yourself there? No, that's very reasonable. And I think that that's a big part of it. It's like, you know, it's important to have dreams and, you know, to dream big. I really think that more people, and this is probably my Jupiter talking, but like 
give yourself the like indulgence of just like dreaming about something and not like sitting there and thinking about it with like all of the real world caveats or all of the ways that it could go wrong or whatever, but just sit there and just really just have a nice like detailed like daydream about something like really think all of the like stuff through with it and just, you know, hold that feeling and enjoy having that and then See what you can do in your daily life to get you even just incrementally closer to that feeling and to those circumstances. Um, you know, hope and dreaming are powerful things, you know, and uh, so I think, you know, having those big kind of dreams in mind and then having practical stuff that you're working towards that can get you closer, even if, you know, you're never gonna, you know, I don't know, like, for example, I fantasize about um like winning like the lottery okay or, like publishers clearing house or something like that like and just thinking about how easy you know things would be like financially speaking i don't think about the like oh well you have all the charities hitting you up for money or you have all these people come out of the woodwork or you have to worry about this kind of lawyer and this kind of financial advisor and blah 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 blah, blah. i just sit there and i think about how nice and how pleasant and how empowering, et cetera, that it would be. And then I think about what I would really want to do and what the manifestation of that dream would be, which is for me, it would be, I would want to have that much money so that I could help like as many people as possible. Right. That's my dream. That's my fantasy. Um, and so then it's like, all right, well, how can I take that, into practical terms and do something with that to get me even to like 20% of that, you know, dream or whatever. And so it's like, I try to, you know, be just a generous person, I guess. And I work on part of my metric for success for me is, do I have enough to share with the people around me and to spread it around? Like that to me is having enough means not just enough for myself but enough for me to share with other people and to help other people with so i think that that's like you know it's definitely a goal of mine is just embodying that more like being able to be more helpful to more people being able to somehow participate in redistributing more wealth and more resources um you know uh yeah, but I guess like, yeah, so goals is like just being more of that kind of person that I want to be in the world, um, which includes things like, yeah, figuring out ways that I can be more generous, um, figuring out ways that I can take care of myself so that I can show up and be the best person that I can be when I'm trying to do all of this stuff, which then, you know, this all breaks down into further and further subcategories of goals, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess just, you know, in the very big picture, though, is continue trying to be a better person, um, get my business slash businesses more off the ground and be able to be, you know, pretty much self-sufficient or at least as close to it as I can be by the end of the year. Um, you know, uh, continue like working on my healthcare stuff. And... Yeah. I don't know. Drinking more water. Got to hydrate. That's always a good goal. Yeah. I was going to say, let me drink some now while I'm thinking about that. So I've been told that when I drink water and I have a headset that people don't really hear it. So mm -hmm. I, I just drank a whole bunch of water. I don't know if anyone heard any throat sounds there, but uh, I didn't hear anything. Well then uh, uh, cool. <laughs> Penny, you and I could do that podcast. We could do Capitalism Fluffs My Hog because I think you and I would both be more inclined to yelling and hollering about this <laughs> um, versus Zombie Paper and I have more kind of like measured discussions where I'm only like hollering at like half volume. So <laughs> if you want to do a yelling about capitalism uh, version of this of this podcast, uh you know where my DMs are. Oh, uh, I I want to say this that um, I was uh, so in endless war. We have many discords about many topics like food mm -hmm. topic. We have a food discord or like um, 
specific kind of like subtopics. And then one that I acquired was the book club discord. Um, mm-hmm. Cause the, the old person just kind of was like, yeah, I'm too busy with life. And yeah, we left with bullshit jobs by David Greer. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. So it's like, I've been like, Hey, does anyone want to do a podcast with me about bullshit jobs? Mm-hmm. Um, and this has been going on for like over a year now. So it's like, I just want to get that podcast on the books done so yeah. that way we can move on to another book and actually use the book club again um but yeah well, if anyone... I mean, oh go ahead yeah no i was just gonna say yeah i know multiple people probably in here in my chat have probably if not read bullshit jobs or at least familiar with um with his work so uh you know yeah i mean everybody you know where zombie papers DMs are. <laughs> yeah, if not, uh, hi, and I'll paste in my uh, my Discord. Um, what is it? Uh, yeah, and I do recommend the Z Discord. I know I've mentioned it before, but it's pretty much the main one that like I open Discord for. Uh, uh, is to like go in there and like, cause I'm in a bunch of servers, but it's like you know there are some that like I go in and I just kind of lurk. And I like look at stuff, but like Z Discord is mainly the one that I actually like participate in. Um, so thank you for creating a like really cool and fun space. Can I paste the link over on your side? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I I like to ask um, uh, because um, <laughs> the the worst piece of advice I've heard um, is uh, ask for pr- forgiveness rather than permission. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah sometimes yes that is necessary sometimes but oftentimes you know a little bit of an ask goes a long Mm. way (laughs) well i was gonna say i feel like most of the people that i've heard say that phrase were like white cis men um oh yes that's tend to just lead with you know well i'm gonna fucking do what i want to fucking do and you know blah 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 that's a toxic uh, masculinity that we were talking about a little bit earlier there. Um. <laughs> it is indeed. Yeah. That's another goal is uh crush toxic masculinity by the end of 2022. I think we can get that one knocked out. Uh, yeah. You know, just knock it out by lunchtime. Um, yeah. Well, I can say as a trans person myself, that a good yeah. goal for me is to, when I recognize toxic masculinity or mm-hmm. even toxic femininity as i'm kind of a trans person i'm neither uh i'm as, as we're going to talk about on on saturday's podcast on about, saturday oh that's a good reminder yes about pronouns that uh yeah. i use no pronominal as kind of like a radical non-binary that i'm like mm-hmm. i reject so much of gender i respect gender so much but I I reject a lot of it, especially for myself, so much that mm-hmm. I radically change my perspective of reality. Um, mm-hmm. And I encourage people to to get on board with being radical. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I was going to say, I have also talked about that another goal of mine for 2022 is just to continue to get weirder yes. um, and to deepen into my existing weirdness, you know, and... Uh, hey you know that's part of it is you know i mean yeah for me like for me personally like you know i definitely have a gender you know or a gendered experience but you know uh i do support people who are into you know gender abolition and uh abandoning the entire concept of gender because that's your personal experience and who am i to be like oh well you're because the thing is, it's like, right, I mean, this is a really great example. Like, you're null pronominal. You reject gender as just kind of a concept in general. You push back on, like, excessive gendering in either dimension, you know, or towards the kind of extreme polarities of masculinity and femininity as they're kind of currently defined, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in in America, to be very, very, very specific about all of this. Um, you know, but, like, it's not like you respect that I have a gendered experience and that other people identify with a or multiple genders. 
you know, and you're not coming around telling me that my identifying, you know, uh, I guess currently I would probably say like as a Denny girl, um, it's the closest I could get to like gender that like that somehow is harming you personally. Yeah, I look at it like so. So with a let's say a person that transitions from um, cis male growing up, uh, then to female, um, some of these terms may be a little bit more nuanced than what I'm, what I'm saying here. Um, but so so this person has transitioned. So mm -hmm. if if I refer to this person with they them pronouns, I mm -hmm. am not acknowledging this person's experience with. Uh, feminine femininity with uh, respecting this person as a feminine person instead mm -hmm. i am i'm reducing that down by using gender neutral language um, when mm -hmm. this person wants to experience this gender at length by mm -hmm. doing this i believe that i am actively uh, because um someone had brought that up um yesterday in, in endless war that um this this uh uh this um ooh the the term i'm i'm uh trans woman that's the term i'm looking mm -hmm. for so this trans woman was saying that people that use they them pronouns for me i feel a little bit disrespected with this yeah. because they're not respecting my identity and i use that there um in that situation so this is where language can be very tricky um mm -hmm. But it's like if, if we say like, oh, hey, um, and then, you know, use they them pronouns for this person, it can be very much of like a, not not respecting that person. And it's, it's something of a maybe a goal of mine to kind of help diffuse this a little bit and to say, like, we respect you in this conversation, in this language. This is not meant to be harmful. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely a goal of mine is to learn more about uh, reducing my own emotional. Um, I have a lot of emotional baggage I need to sort through. Uh, and fortunately, yeah. a goal I achieved was getting a psychologist that is good. Um, <laughs> Great. Goal achieved. Yeah, see? So, and that's the thing is you also need to set yourself up with goals that are achievable in smaller timelines than like a month, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I want to do a year of yoga. And I'm like, okay, but then if that's your qualifications, like I have to do a whole year of this activity before, you know, I consider the gold completed. I'm like, that's a huge, like, slog. Like, you know, break this stuff down into, like, smaller chunks. Like, you can have an overall goal, you know? <laughs> It's silly, but it makes me think of like um, achievements in games, yeah. right? Like I'm thinking about when I used to play like World of Warcraft, you'd have like a number of achievements that you would get, you know, in a, a category basically of achievements. And then by getting all of those, then you would get a larger achievement for having completed all of those smaller achievements. Mm. You know, so it was like, oh, OK, so you get an achievement for filling out the map for this continent or for this section of the continent. And then once you filled out all of the maps, then you get a larger one above that. That's like, congratulations, you filled out all the maps, you know, so you need to have tiers of goals um, to reach, I think. Yeah, to use an example from healthcare that uh, either today or tomorrow. Uh, health dependence. I want to call um, the neurologist's uh, office and the the occupational therapist office to schedule appointments. Mm -hmm. um, that is the short term goal to the long term goal of getting my health care uh, fixed. So yeah, if I say I yes I want health care fixed, uh, that is a good goal. But each step it requires all these steps each day to get to that point so yeah. <laughs> uh sorry you got to do a little bit of work there uh zombie paper there it's like oh shit okay okay i'll do it <laughs> yeah but again you just break it down into into digestible units of effort you know um 
But yeah, I think just trying to encourage yourself in general towards goals is a good thing. Positive reinforcement, you know, rather than negative. Yeah, and then like when, so when when maybe I get like the sort of like, hey, zombie paper, it, like my my brain will tell me stuff sometimes. Be like, hey, you didn't you didn't call yesterday. It's like, yeah, I did, I wasn't feeling well enough to call both of those offices. Is that yeah. okay? Their brain and my brain's just like, hey, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. It's right. Like, so it circling back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, it was like, if if I get host aisle with that and i think like oh you know i'm i'm getting mad well it's like all my yeah. brain is really doing is trying to make sure that we get we get an order like all the pieces are put together but it gets really kind of like when you think like oh shit i'm not achieving my goals well mm -hmm. that's the scope that's like you yeah. you've planned to climb mount everest build a sh spaceship to go to pluto and then mm -hmm. carve on the face of Pluto, this is a planet, Neil deGrasse Tyson, thanks. And you planned all this out in a week? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Sure. But, yeah, it's going to take you a while to achieve that. But you can, you know, praise yourself for reaching the smaller sub-goals of, like, buying the, I guess, the mountain climbing equipment or whatever, you know. Yeah, so you, you sequentially yeah. break that down. Like Jordy says, you have mm -hmm. the tiers of, I need to buy the mountain gear, I need to buy the rocket ship materials, I need to buy the spite to get to <laughs> Pluto. Yeah, I need to learn how to make a rocket ship. Uh, like, I need to get enough money to buy all of this stuff in the first place. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> I... What is it? I can't remember if I know that this is or at least the possibly mangled version that I'll say I'm pretty I don't know who it's quoting, but it's about like uh, start where you are, use what you have and do what you can mm. like something like that. But, you know, it's yeah, it's starting with what you have, you know, um, like, yeah, something that's like 75 percent good is something is better than something that's like zero percent good because you never did it because you didn't think it could be a hundred percent better better uh done than perfect right yeah i mean i'm sure that i'll go back in you know even a month two months three months and look at the first weekly astrodice forecast that i did yesterday and be like oh wow i could have improved this i could have done that i could have done this i could have done that but i started Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm just going to keep doing them and, you know, I can improve over time. So I'll use language from Endless War here by saying that that is not cringe. That is based because you, yeah. you look at, <laughs> you, you look at your, your previous works and you say like, Hey, my Astro Dice session was really inefficient in this way. And I feel, I feel a sense of like cringing over this. Mm -hmm. But instead, adopt the little b approach of things are based by saying, you know what, I've improved uh, what would have been a 10 minute session before I have now condensed into eight to five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I understand this more. I have more of a framework. So thank you for a session for helping me figure out how to get to this session. Yep. Extremely exactly. based. <laughs> Hashtag based. Hashtag based, pound sign based. Um, I'll put that in the in the I have in the vod. I have like down at the very bottom. I have like all the pound signs for the algorithm. Yeah, I'll put based in there. <laughs> I mean, why not? Little, I mean, you know, unless Little B has done anything particularly odious in the last couple of years, uh, I appreciate what he does and his general ethos. From what so. I know of Little B, uh, Little B is probably the the purest and kindest rapper out there uh um, yeah and it's just one of those like just exudes positivity and it just like when when i hear hatred toward little b it's like what what are you doing <laughs> right like why like what could you possibly hate on little b for i mean i do i do kind of make fun of people when they use based in endless war a little bit i kind of just poke it sure. as, like, Based on what? Based on what? Yeah. Based on what? Yeah. 
<laughs> I was going to say, you're also playing with a lot of, I think, probably like Gen Z or like younger millennials. So, uh, you know. Yeah, I'm by far being 35, coming up on 36 later on this year. I am, I'm I'm mm-hmm. probably the oldest, if not in the top five of age um, of yeah. players. And uh, <laughs> I was talking to this, this person last night um, who is releasing a new album in February. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I make, I made a whole bunch of like cringy stuff, but now this is my first album. I really want to engage with and, and like have, have be like a serious production. I'm like, cool. Let me know when it comes out. I'll listen to it. Yeah. And then, then we were talking about ages and I, I was like, I think you're in your mid twenties. And the person's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be 18 in a few months. And I was like, what the oh fuck? My God. <laughs> I didn't learn how to become a human being of any kind of quality until I was 30 um, to want to yeah. make things. And, and you are 17 and you're making a good album. Um, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's rad. I think it's great. It's wonderful, isn't it? Like, I think we should encourage kids to do this stuff. One of you the know? most emotionally intelligent, intellectually intelligent, and just all around knowledgeable people I met um, is around 22 years old. Mm-hmm. Of all the people I've ever met in the entire lifespan of me. Yeah. 22? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I mean, there are. <sighs> you know, all different kinds of people out there in the world. Um, and perhaps it should be a goal for both of us to uh, meet more cool people. Yes. More cool yeah. people and be the cool people that people want to interact with as well. Yes. Yeah. Coolness comes from inside. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Well, I have a goal that I would like to accomplish soon, which is to make and eat some dinner. Haha. I like your segue into the outro. <laughs> um, final thoughts on like uh, charity stuff and all that kind of stuff is like a bit of an outro. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's see. Um, my my uh, charity for I do like monthly charity promos is uh foundation 45 uh based on my uh based <laughs> yeah <laughs> on, extremely based on my uh, on my friend's recommendation nigel neverland suggests uh, foundation 45 um mm-hmm. so they they talk about health um nigel knows some of the people here personally um has interacted with the with the group um the organization nonprofit and likes what the nonprofit does so it's like mm-hmm. shoot having like a one to one connection yeah go for it they talk about mental health of all sorts i i i don't read out the particulars because you can see it on my side and yeah if you need their assistance they're around i think it's awesome um i never encourage people to donate but i say that if you're going to give me like a $5 sub on Twitch uh, throw that five dollars over to Foundation Forty Five this month, and that would right. help. That would help that community out a lot more than give me five bucks to spend on on groceries. <laughs> well, because it wouldn't even be five bucks if it was a regular Twitch sub; it'd be like two fifty. Yes. You know, uh, you might get five bucks from a Prime sub, but then you also have to meet the like hundred dollar payout threshold. So even if somebody does, you know give you that five dollar prime sub you're gonna have to wait until you get 20 more of those before you even see the money uh and then yeah just all sorts of nuances that for me personally i don't i don't i don't put this on anyone else but for me personally i actively need the money so um if other people want you like you you have you have uh the affiliate stuff on bella so i'm not hating on you at all um no i mean but i also am not like i moved all of my emotes to follower emotes and i don't actively solicit subs because i say i'm like look all of my emotes are follower emotes um if you really want to give me money like just go to my Kofi or, you know, hit me up on Cash App or Venmo or whatever. Um, if you actually want to just financially support me. 
um, you know, versus giving that money to Twitch. Like, I've got the follower emotes there. You can put on an ad blocker so that you don't get ads, you know, and then you'll have pretty much the sub experience. I would never, I would never do that. I would never, ever, ever do that. Uh... <laughs> do what? Uh, what you just said about the ad blocker. I would never, ever, ever, ever do that. Don't worry about Oh, me. never, ever. Not uh, Angelic Zombie Paper, who would never do anything like that. Um, speaking of my Kofi, I'm just going to drop that in here as well. Oh, what is the very good news, Henny? I don't know if I've heard this very good news. I always like hearing good news. People. Yeah, good news is always Unless good. it's good news that's bad news for me. <laughs> or um, or good news, sarcastic good news of like, good news, good I news. fucked up my life. <laughs> yeah, good news, I lost my keys down the sewer. Yeah, and the yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are not there to help me out. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Aww. That's wonderful. Aw. Uh, yeah. Yay. Yay for yay for babies. You know, I mean, even though I don't personally want any babies, you know, yay. Yay for babies. Yay for the continuation of the human species. And may all of the babies being born today see a better future uh, than I currently expect. To babies. Shout out to babies. <laughs> I would do exclamation point so babies, but I don't know who streams under the Twitch name babies. I'm I'm looking it up here for you. Don't worry. Um, checking out the checking out the babies on Twitch. Yeah, because like when you talk about cheese earlier, it's just like twitch.tv slash cheese. It's like that's it. Huh. Yeah, I don't think it's even cheese zero five anymore. I think it is just cheese now. So there is a babies with an S and then yeah. there are other ones. But so I've noticed this with like um, esports where mm -hmm. like what they do is they lock down like these generic names and then yeah. what they would do is sell them as accounts um, and then kind of like it was a racket of some sort. But uh, mm hmm. Yeah, twitch.tv slash babies has no followers and looks like just a, a junk account. So don't follow them, even though I just uh, <laughs> said the name. Fuck. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. I won't. Uh, cool. All right. Well, let's worry more about, uh, yeah, I guess finishing wrapping this up. Uh, do you, yeah, any other final stuff? Do you have any raid targets in mind? Um, let's see. So, uh, Upside Down Matt just started. Uh, yeah, I noticed that. I saw that, uh, uh, he, I believe he, him pronouns for Matt. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I saw that he'd gone up a little while ago. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to raid Matt. Yeah. I haven't Seems been over like a good guy in a while. And, and I guess he's starting to do daytime streams now, which is, uh, it's like I normally see Matt and it's like, oh, yes, it is. It is like 11 p.m. Pacific time. And it is, uh, <laughs> it is like, oh, it, it is not. <laughs> yeah, time zones are a thing, as it turns out. Wild, yeah. Yeah. Well, good for him. If, um, if he's able to stream during the day. Um, my yeah, daytime. absolutely. So yeah, I'm gonna raid Matt. Um, any final words on your side? Uh... Um, be excellent to each other. Uh, I hope that everybody is able to set and achieve some good goals this year. Um, yeah, you can go give me money on Kofi if you want to learn about uh, the forecast for this week or for upcoming weeks. Uh, you can also schedule astrology consultations with me. Um, all of my links are in my bio. Um, yeah, Zombie Paper, I'm looking forward to talking with you again on Saturday. Um, so I guess people should follow one or both of us on Twitter uh, to learn more about that. Yeah, and then uh, Al Talks will be joining us for that. Yeah. And it will be a, the, the conversation will be uh, very interesting in, in a positive way. Um, I will learn a lot. I'm, I imagine, along with everyone else, um, it'll be a great old time. Um, 
hope to see you there. If not, don't worry at all. Yeah, you can always catch us on the VOD. Yes. Well, uh, yes. that'll be it for me, and uh, I imagine you there too. Also for me. So, yeah. Well, bye bye <laughs> Bye bye <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs>